From Nippert Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati, Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricanes football. Today, the Miami Hurricanes go for a 2-0 start to the 1998 season as they take on the Bearcats of Cincinnati. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Fort, alongside my partner, John Congemi, to call the action of today's game. John, the Hurricanes open with an impressive win over a 1-AA opponent, East Tennessee State 66-17. Hard to get a real read on how much the Hurricanes have improved, but one good sign was the play of the very young offensive line, especially the right side of that young offensive line. Well, the Miami Hurricanes passed their first test last week, and I think that young offensive line also had a test. They came through with flying colors. Bibla and Gonzalez, they did a great job on the right side, anchoring that side down for Edger and James and all, really all the running backs to providing them holes and protection for Scott Covington. Look for a lot of that to come again from that right side today, but they'll be tested by a much bigger and faster Cincinnati front four. And a defense certainly that plays a lot of different fronts. As for Edger and James, he played only through the second quarter last week because of a thigh injury, practiced at full speed all week. He's fine, but if there are any problems, James Jackson, Najee Davenport certainly can pick up the slack. He's got plenty of help in that backfield. He wants to stay healthy. He got 77 yards last weekend against East Tennessee, but he'll look to improve on those stats today against Cincinnati. He's a great big back. He can make you miss in the open field. Last season, he did it all season long. You can see him in the open field. Once he gets through that to the secondary, he's gone. He's got great speed to the outside for a big running back at 6'2", 205 pounds. So he can make you miss on the outside. Just terrific threats, uh, really, all the way through that depth. Miami rushed for over 300 yards. Last week, Cincinnati gave up over 300 yards on the ground. We'll see how that plays out today. We'll be back with more on today's contest from Nippert Stadium as the Hurricanes prepare to take on the Bearcats right after this on Sports Channel. University of Miami football on Sports being brought to you in part by Bell South and its international family of customers. By Grand Prize Chevrolet Oldsmobile, located in Miami, where Jimmy Johnson does business. By Office Depot, business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. By Sitco, depend on Sitco when it counts. By Hoover, nobody gets the dirt like Hoover, nobody. And by Mazda, come see what happens when a car company has more engineers and fewer accountants. Welcome back to Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, as the Miami Hurricanes get to take on the Cincinnati Bearcats here on the University of Cincinnati campus. John, another good sign last week for the Hurricanes. The special teams came back and started making plays, blocking kicks, and the coverage team was excellent. Frank, they brought back an attitude that Miami lacked dearly in the special teams area last season. You can see there on the statistics, not a big difference, but what they did was Edward Reed blocks a kick right into the arms of Nate Brooks. He scores for a touchdown, and also Nate Brooks gets a piece of a punt. So they were more aggressive on, on their punt coverage kickoff coverage and the kickers did an excellent job of putting the ball in the end zone and the bad news for the University of Cincinnati Tinker Keck their special teams ace four touchdowns on punt returns last season and their starting free safety will not play today with a knee injury their best player on the other side of the ball is their answer to Cordell Stewart slashing the pros his name is Chad Plummer Chad Plummer can do it all for Cincinnati last week he lined up at quarterback to start the football game had a great job he completed uh, six passes for 76 yards but catching the football he had 72 yards on three receptions he averaged 24 yards every time he touched the football from that position. So you have to watch out where Chad Plummer's going to line up. First, he lines up at quarterback, makes a great throw under duress over the middle for a big play for Cincinnati last week. And then he couples that when he lines up in the slot in the in the Twins re uh, receiving area, goes over the middle. He's a big guy at 6'2", but makes himself small for that reception. The University of Miami has to be aware where he lines up because he can beat you. He's got great speed to the outside, and he's got good size, can make a big play at any time. The object for Miami's defense, keep Plummer and his relief man, Deontay Kenner, in the pocket. Don't let him move around and make plays. We'll be back with the opening kickoff from the University of Cincinnati as the Bearcats take on the Miami Hurricanes right after this on Sports Channel. Back at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel as Big East football comes your way. Butch Davis's Miami Hurricanes looking to go 2-0 in this young season, taking on the Bearcats of Cincinnati out of Conference USA. Cincinnati lost their opener last week, 52-34 to Tulane University. In fact, trailed that game rather badly going into the fourth quarter and scored three touchdowns to make it at least respectable. Butch starting his fourth season, 23-12. On the other sideline is Rick Minter, he got a four-year contract extension over the summer after taking Cincinnati to the Humanitarian Bowl last year in an 8-4 and four record. And Rick Minner 
has his work cut out for him because he was all over his team this week, John. The word was he was extremely unhappy with the effort and performance, especially of his defense last week. So he got on his defense at least pretty good this week. Yeah, he pulled the Lou Holtz. He was even mean to the coaching staff. So he really wants to get out and, and prove a point against Miami that the Cincinnati team of 98 is not going to be someone that uh, you can push around. Cincinnati won the toss. They have deferred until the second half. Miami will receive the opening kickoff. Number one, Daryl Jones standing back at his goal line along with number 21, James Jackson and kicking off for the Bearcats will be a South Florida product that is Jason Mamarelli number 15 out of South Broward High School ran into him yesterday before the uh, practice and said I always wanted to be a hurricane but things just didn't work out that way so he made his way up here to Cincinnati and is the kickoff specialist in fact five of his six kickoffs last week went into the end zone for touchbacks the other kick intentionally kicked short which is something both Miami and East Tennessee State did last week. So we'll see how Cincinnati plays the opening kickoff here. Ready to go from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, an on-campus facility, one of the oldest stadiums, in fact, the sixth oldest stadium in all of Division I college football. Mamarelli hits it long and deep and out of the end zone on the fly and into the stands. And Miami will have to start first and 10 from their own 20. So at least Jason Mamarelli is pumped up for this one. Yeah, big kick right off the bat. That would have went out of Johnny Bench Stadium, which is just adjacent to the uh, football complex here. So the Hurricanes will take over first and 10. And here is Scott Covington. Last season, his numbers. Last week, he was 10 of 18 with a couple of touchdowns. And there are the numbers from last week. Not spectacular, but very efficient. And he didn't have to be spectacular last week. We'll take a look at the rest of the starting lineups coming up after the opening play as the Hurricanes begin first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Santana Moss goes into the slot at the top of the screen. Nick Williams and Edger and James are the running backs. It's going to be James on the stretch play, trying to get to the corner, and he gets seven yards out close to the 28-yard line. Number 48, Hassan Champion making the tackle for Cincinnati. Let's take a look at the rest of the Miami starting lineup. Edger and James out of Immokalee, the junior. 77-yard effort last week and left midway through the second quarter. Among the receivers, Santana Moss back from a cracked jawbone. He sat out last week's game getting his first start of the season. And Ty Wise at center graded out 100% on running plays last week. First time in... Coach Arquijo's memory, the offensive line coach, that that has happened. It was a pickup of eight on first down for Edger and James. Canes come up second and two with Moss in motion. And again to give to Edger and James. Finds a little bit of a hole, has first down yardage out close to the 33-yard line. The tackle by Percy Evans, the senior defensive tackle out of Boston. And let's take a look at the Bearcat defense. David Jackson out of Belle Glade, Florida, had five tackles, two of them for losses last week against Tulane. The linebacker core led by Hassan Champion out of Tallahassee Godby High School. And in the secondary, it'll be Bobby Fuller starting for Tinker Keck, their best player on defense for Cincinnati, and also the punt return specialist. The pickup was five on the last play. It'll be first and ten for the Hurricanes as Edger and James got the first down out to the 33-yard line. First possession of the game, Covington's first pass. Plenty of time. Going deep for Reggie Wayne. Wayne has it at the Cincinnati 30 and dropped inside the 28-yard line. Sean Ferguson with the coverage, but a big throw and a big catch by Reggie Wayne. Frank, you can tell right off the bat that Miami's going to have opportunities to go down the field. It's going to be a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Reggie Wayne does a great job after the play action by Scott Covington of keeping the defender with it between him and the ball. Watch him just like a, a rebounder in basketball. Keep the defender behind him, put the ball in front of him, and keep his body between the ball and the defender. Great job of going up and getting the football by Reggie Wayne. 39-yard gain for Reggie Wayne. First down at the Cincinnati 28-yard line. Andre King into the lineup, and Reggie Wayne will take a breather after the catch. Here comes James. Nick Williams with a lead block, and it's a good one. James to the 20. James down the sideline, and Edger and James stepped out of bounds just at the 10-yard line. He thought he scored, but the officials mark him out at the 10. It's a pickup of 18, and the Hurricanes will have a first down. There you see the explosiveness of Edger and James going to the outside on the counterplay. We talked about the two young, uh, the guard and tackle. Watch 65, Bibla, on the pull right here. Kicks out number 22, Gossett, the linebacker for Cincinnati. Now it's all Edger and James to the outside. He gets a, sh a chance to show you his speed on the outside. Miami knocking on the door early in the first quarter. The only bad thing about the play is it's first and goal from just a nose across the 10. The Canes cannot get a first down from the Cincinnati 10-yard line. Nick Williams, the fullback, through to the five, inside the five to the four-yard line where he's pounded down. Bobby Fuller got a piece of the tackle. The 
safety out of Lexington, North Carolina, but it's a pickup on first down, a nice pickup of about six yards. Yeah, nice straight ahead running by Nick Williams. He's bringing it to at 6'2", 265, just in between the tackles, the line surge, they do a nice job getting off the football. You see a lot of black jerseys going backwards. Richard Mercier on the left side, pancaking one of the Bearcat defensive front linemen. Second and goal for Miami from the Cincinnati four. Opening possession of the game. Covington, fade pattern, Reggie Wayne made the catch, got the touchdown. Reggie Wayne from four yards out makes a nice touchdown catch. Don McKnight, who played for Miami running back coach Don Solinger at Southridge High School, had the coverage and had good coverage, but Wayne made a spectacular play. No, nothing you can do, Frank, when Scott Covington audibles to the fade route and puts the ball where only his receiver can catch it. A nice shake move on the uh, line of scrimmage by Reggie Wayne. He goes up and gets it at the highest point, and it looked like a little bit of arena football there. Runs into the padding on the side, but just a nice touch pass by Scott Covington. Puts enough air under the football so Reg can go up and get one foot in bounds for the Hurricane score. And he did get that left foot down. Andy Crossland in to convert out of the hold of Jeff Popovich. And Andy is now 10 for 10 on extra points this season. The Hurricanes have jumped out to a quick 7-0 lead. 12 minutes and 32 seconds left in the first quarter. And an impressive opening drive of 80 yards by the Hurricanes, John. You have to be impressed, Frank. They take the football down on their opening drive against a good Cincinnati defense. They, they're going to show you a lot of looks, a lot of eight-man pr front pressure. It's going to be tough to run the football, but that's what Butch Davis said in the beginning of the week. You're going to see a lot of big plays. If they're going to come with man-to-man -man coverage, we're going to push the ball down the field and look for a lot of big plays from our skill positions. So far, they've got two from Scott Covington and their wide receiver, the sophomore, Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne said he wanted to get in the end zone more often this year at 48 catches, a Hurricane freshman record last year, but only two touchdowns. Well. Uh, a game and three minutes into the second game, he's already got two. By the way, Edger and James had three carries for 31 yards on that drive. There is the freshman from Ankeny, Iowa, Todd Sievers, to kick it off. And back deep to receive will be number 19, Don McKnight, and number 33, Bobby Cooper, for the Bearcats. If there's any wind at all, Frank, Sievers will be kicking into it, but there doesn't look like it's too much to affect the football. Well, Miami with the 7-0 lead very early here in the ball game. 12.32 left to go first quarter. They went to 80 yards in six plays, took 2.32 off the clock. Make it 2.28 off the clock. And here is Seavers' kickoff. Drills it. This is McKnight driven back, and McKnight will down it there for the touchback. And the Bearcats will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. So the the kickers, uh, both kickers doing great jobs. The Bearcat defense could not hold the Hurricanes. We'll see how the Miami defense does in their first possession. Number four, Chad Plummer is the quarterback. 6'3", 220 pound senior. Another uh, young man from Florida out of Tallahassee Godby High School. In fact, he grew up in Delray Beach and then moved to Tallahassee. Last week, six out of seven, so that accounts for the very high completion percentage. 76 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. DeMarco McCleskey is the tailback. Eric Beal is the fullback. On first down, that's the fullback, Beal, and he goes absolutely nowhere. The whole center of the Miami offensive, defensive front making the tackle, Nate Webster, along with Matt Sweeney and Damian Lewis. Let's take a look at the Cincinnati offense. DeMarco McCleskey, true freshman, 11 carries, 98 yards last week against Tulane. Cornelius Bonner had two passes caught last week among the wide receivers. And in the offensive line, Brian Yule may be the best center prospect coming out of college football this year, but he has been moved to left tackle to protect the quarterback's blind side in this his senior season. The Miami defense in just a moment give Beal a gain of a yard on the first play. It's second and nine for the Bearcats. Double wide receivers to the top of the screen. On the option. And Dan Morgan and Derek Ham combined to drop Chad Plummer for a two-yard loss. Here comes the Miami defense, and it is a very, very young defense. Michael Burrow gets the start at defensive end in place of Quincy Hips, who had an abnormal heartbeat yesterday and is being held out of the game. Michael Smith coming off a sprained ankle. He missed the opener. He gets his first start of the season. And on the defensive side, Marquise Fitzgerald, the freshman from St. Petersburg, gets his second consecutive start. Officially call it a loss of a yard. It's third and 11 for the Bearcats from their own 19-yard line. Triple wide receiver formation, no tight end. Out of the shotgun. Plummer steps up. Over the middle. Pass is caught at the 40-yard line. Incomplete. 
That is Plummer, the quarterback, making the catch from Deontay Kenner. Ed Reed had the coverage, but it's a pickup of 21 yards and a first down. Frank, this is what Cincinnati likes to do in third and long situations. When they go to the shotgun, they put Kenner at quarterback, a bad snap. He gets the ball, and he has a lot of patience and a lot of time to wait for Plummer, who was in the slot that, on the crossing route. He just passed Dan Morgan over the middle of the field. A nice throw by Kenner and a, a great reception by Plummer going down to the carpet to catch it. So it's first and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 41-yard line as they move the chains. McCluskey's first carry. McCluskey cannot get very far. He'll be held to maybe a yard gain. Dan Morgan with the initial hit, helped out by Nate Webster, and the Hurricanes swarming to the football against the run. Yeah, about 10 white jerseys in your frame that time, all led by number 44, Dan Morgan. He had 19 total tackles last week against East Tennessee. Eight of those were unassisted already on the first play. The option, you saw Dan scrape to the outside and catch the quarterback on the option. That time, a, a herd of, of white jerseys in the middle of the football field stopping the Cincinnati run. Deontay Kenner into the ball game at quarterback, and Plummer moves out into the slot. And Cincinnati will need timeout. They've got 12 guys out there, or at least they've got the wrong formation. The tight end, Josh Anderson, number 88, back at the 30-yard line. He wasn't sure whether he was on the field or off the field, and he's the one who called timeout. 9.59 left to go first quarter here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Hurricanes lead Cincinnati 7 0. We'll be right back with more college football on Sports Channel right after this. Back at Nippert Stadium, second and nine for Cincinnati. That's Plummer on the catch from Kenner. Plummer across midfield. Plummer cut by Edward Reed and brought down inside the Miami 30-yard line. But a little uh, short wide receiver screen to Chad Plummer and a big gain for the Bearcats. Nice call by uh, receivers coach Joe Daniels on the sideline. Just an inside screen to Chad Plummer. The version of slash you have for the Bearcats. A nice job of being patient, staying behind his blockers. Then he almost breaks it all the way into the end zone. A huge gain for the Cincinnati Bearcat offense. Call it a gain of 32. It's first down at the 26 of Miami for the Bearcats. Plummer, the quarterback, on the option. Pitches to McCleskey. McCleskey gets inside one man, but is dropped by Nate Webster for a loss of three yards. He cut inside Delvin Brown, but Nate Webster's pursuit got him. That's great pressure by a defense on the option, pressuring the corner. Watch the quarterback. He has to attack the line of scrimmage, but you see him making the pitch going towards the backfield. That brings McCleskey, number 31, deeper into the backfield, and that just gives time for that pursuit, that speed of the Miami defense and Nate Webster and, and the uh, rest of the gang to get in that Bearcat offensive backfield and make the play behind the line of scrimmage. Nate Webster uh, doing a nice job behind the Bearcat offensive line. Miami's defense done well on first down. Zero yardage on first down, but it's third downs that have really hurt them. Kenner the quarterback, Plummer in motion. Deontay Kenner looking underneath, and he was under a big rush, and the incompletion forced by number 92, Damian Lewis. Well, that's what you've got to do, get in the quarterback's face. He has a quick three-step drop by Kenner, trying to get Chad Plummer the football on an underneath on a delay route. But Lewis, number 92, the sophomore defensive tackle, really just beat the offensive line, the offensive guard, Vince Bird, off the line of scrimmage. Nice speed move that time by number 92, Lewis. Cincinnati one for one on third down conversions. They face a third and about 13, just inside Miami's 29-yard line. Deontay Kenner out of the shotgun. Kenner steps up, fires incomplete. He was going for Cornelius Bonner, number three, at about the Miami 12-yard line. Good coverage from Nick Ward. And Cincinnati will be forced into a field goal situation. Number 13, Joe Judge, comes onto the field. Deontay Kenner will be the holder. And this will be approximately an attempt of 46 yards. As Kenner kneels at the 36-yard line of the Hurricanes. Joe Judge's first field goal attempt of the season coming up here. Low snap. Kenner does a good job getting it down. Line drive kick is good. So good work by Deontay Kenner picking up the snap on one hop. And Joe Judge gets Cincinnati on the scoreboard with a 46-yard field goal. Both quarterbacks very athletic. A play you don't see very often get credit for. But a nice pickup on the bad snap. Kenner puts it down. And it's three points for Cincinnati. Eight minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's Miami 7, Cincinnati 3. We'll be right back on Sports Channel after this.
Sports Channel is your home for NFL football Florida style. Tune in every Sunday morning for 90 minutes of in-depth pregame coverage of the Dolphins, the Buccaneers, and the Jaguars. It's all on Sunday morning NFL exclusively on Sports Channel Florida. 7-3 is our score. The Hurricanes open the game with a touchdown drive. And Cincinnati came back with a nine-play, 52-yard march, resulting in a 45-yard field goal from Joe Judge, 45 the official distance. Did you get a look at Butch Davis? He's got a young defense that he's working on, and they did well against the run, but gave up a couple of big pass plays on that Cincinnati opening drive. Jason Mamorelli will kick it off for the Bearcats, Daryl Jones and James Jackson at the Miami goal line. Frank Fort, John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel as we bring you Hurricane football each and every Saturday during the season. Here's the kick from Mamorelli. Drives it low over Jackson and through the end zone. It'll be another touchback. And Miami again will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Here's the scoring drive for the Bearcats. Nine plays, 52 yards, consuming three minutes and 56 seconds. And Joe Judge with the field goal. But as we mentioned, Deontay Kenner gets a large share of the credit handling the one-bounce snap and putting it up for Judge. It wasn't a pretty kick, but it got through there. Effective, Frank. It was very effective. It went through the post. Now it's a challenge for Miami to come back out on offense, get the ball on their 20-yard line, see if they can regain that run and pass mix that they had in the first series. Miami begins with the standard eye formation. Covington with the play fake. Covington for Bubba Franks and a good play by Bobby Fuller, the safety to strip the ball away. It's incomplete. Perfect timing that time by Bobby Fuller coming from the free safety position in a nice defensive disguise by Cincinnati. Looked like they were coming with pressure and everybody dropped out and made a tough throw for Scott Covington. Champion, the linebacker, really got great depth. He had pressure in his face. You see 48 right there. Scott had to throw the football over his head, but you see the pressure on the outside by Percy Evans, number 92. He beats uh, Joaquin Gonzalez to the outside. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes. Cincinnati showing blitz, and here they come. And Covington hit as he throws, and that ball is incomplete. The pressure coming from the outside, Dewan Gossett, the linebacker, hitting Covington as he threw and forcing the incompletion. It'll bring up third and 10. Well, score two points for Cincinnati on the last two plays. They've done a nice job of faking the blitz, and now they come with pressure, and they do a good job from the weak side. Scott Covington has to get rid of the football. He's got a time and a clock in his head. He knows the pressure's coming, and he just waited a second too long, but that was nice pressure from the outside. You see, Gossett, number 22, the linebacker, came from the outside on touch. He's unaccounted for, so Scott has to get rid of the football before he can get to the quarterback. Miami with the triple wide receiver formation on third and 10. 8.20 to go first quarter. Kane's up 7-3. to three. Cincinnati backs out of the blitz. Covington moving out of the pocket. Going for Andre King, complete up at the 38-yard line. That'll be a first down and a pickup of 19. Eric Harper had the coverage, but Miami will move the chains. Well, that's a way you can buy yourself some time. A nice, a nice athletic move on the outside by Covington. He hung in the pocket a little bit longer than he thought. He said, there's nobody out of my sight to the right. Let me just drift the pocket a little bit, buy myself some time, and then throw a strike to Andre King on the comeback. Nice separation. Good route on the outside by King on the comeback. Gain of 18 to the 38-yard line. Covington 3 of 5 for 61 yards so far in the first quarter. That was Miami's first third down opportunity and obviously their first conversion. Edger and James bobbles the football, picks it up, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. Bobby Fuller in there along with David Jackson. A problem on the exchange between Covington and James, but the Hurricanes fortunate to get the football back. See if we can find out what happened. It looked like Scott just reaching for the football. Usually the, the running back's not supposed to go ahead and grab for the football. You're supposed to lay it into his belly. That time it looked like Edron had his head up at maybe a defender trying to make a move before he had the football and just dropped it. Second and 12 for the Hurricanes. 7.42 left to go first quarter here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Covington, three-step drop. Reggie Wayne with Damon Neely out in front. And Wayne run out of bounds by Dewan Gossett, who lost his helmet. And Reggie Wayne will pick up about five or six on the play, and he'll bring up third down. Reggie did a nice job of, of going back and getting the football. That time the ball drifted Reggie behind the line of scrimmage and may have taken a couple yards off of that reception. You see Reggie last season, 48 receptions and only two touchdowns. He's already got two this season in 1998. Wayne's third catcher in the first quarter. He's got 46 yards. Miami with a third and six from their 42-yard line, and timeout is called. 
Looked like the Hurricanes might not have had the right package on the field. It is Cincinnati's timeout, I beg your pardon. So the Bearcats were the ones that called the timeout, and that uh, is their second timeout of the first half. They've used up two, and Rick Minner looking out there saying, guys, we got to get together. These they are some run. things that happen early in the season, though. Early in the season, but Cincinnati runs such a complex defense that they're running people in and out. They've got different bodies in different positions for every every coverage and every scheme that they're running. So, you know, Rick Minter has to know where people are, and I think it was a good job by the some of the senior leadership on the uh, field for him out there calling a timeout and, and getting people in the right spot. When you run pressure defenses, you do not want to have uh, people in wrong spots because that'll hurt you not only for big gains, but for touchdowns in the secondary. So far in this first quarter, the Hurricanes have averaged over nine yards per play, and they have a seven to three lead. They scored on the opening possession a Scott Covington four yard touchdown pass to Reggie Wayne. Cincinnati responded with a Joe Judge field goal of 45 yards. And that's where we stand right now with seven minutes, 29 seconds left to go in the first quarter. A look at Scott Covington, the senior quarterback out of Laguna Nigel, California, 6'2", 220 pounds. Waited patiently for his turn at one point in his career and publicly said he was going to transfer, but Butch Davis talked him out of it. And so Miami has a senior quarterback who has thrown over 200 passes coming into this season. This game's gonna, uh, gonna be like a roller coaster ride for Scott Covington. A lot of highs and lows because you're gonna have great success beating the pressure, but you're also gonna have to take some hits to beat that pressure. Cincinnati with a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage on a third and six. And here they come. Covington, hot read, Reggie Wayne makes the catch, gets out to midfield for 49 yard line of Miami and has enough for the first down. Sean Ferguson on the coverage, it's a gain of seven and the Hurricanes will keep possession. Cincinnati brings eight and Scott Covington and the offensive staff recognizes that. Just a quick slant, they're gonna put a lot of pressure on the Miami receiver saying, if you can beat the cornerback off the line of scrimmage, you're gonna have success. That's exactly what they're doing on the outside. Andre King and Reggie Wayne having great success on first, second and third down, trying to just make some moves on the outside. Covington, five of seven, 74 yards and a touchdown here in the first quarter. First down Miami at their 49. Nick Williams, shuffle motion. Stretch play and Edwin James on the carry will get into Cincinnati territory and pick up about three yards. Kevin Ward, the senior defensive tackle, making the play along with David Jackson. Kevin Ward, number 77, very interesting story, was charged with uh, distributing cocaine in high school back in Virginia and uh, managed to stay out of jail, got on a probation, and has really straightened his life out, has become a Dean's List student here at the University of Cincinnati and a senior leader on this football team. Ball just inside the Cincinnati 48-yard line. We'll give James uh, officially four yards on the play. It'll bring up second and six. Covington straight drop. Fader out to Reggie Wayne and overthrows him at the Cincinnati 25-yard line. Don McKnight, a senior out of Miami Southridge High School, had good coverage. Miami taking a chance of going up top. Again, pressure on the outside. Reggie that time didn't get the leverage on the outside that was needed. Nice job by Don McKnight on the outside, a native of Miami, doing a good job with pressure defense on Reggie Wayne. We mentioned in the opening, Don McKnight played for Miami running backs coach Don Solinger at Southridge when Solinger took the Spartans to a state title. A powerhouse team there. Third and we'll call it seven for the Hurricanes in Cincinnati territory. Blitz coming. Covington moving out of the pocket. Covington to 40. Covington trying to get the first down and he's going to be very close. The ball came out but it looked like he had hit the ground. And oh they say Cincinnati football. McKnight made the recovery. Looked like he stripped the football right out of the quarterback Scott Covington's arms. A nice move on the inside. He felt the pressure stepped up in the pocket. Looked like he had enough yardage for the first down. You can't Knock Scott Covington for the effort. He was reaching for the first down and just a great at athletic and uh, play by Don Knight stripping the football. You'll see the pressure come right up the middle and from the corners. Scott steps up away from the pressure, makes a great play there. Looks like he's going to get the first down, but there you see number 19. McKnight strips the football with his right hand, gets it, and it's, it's a Cincinnati turnover. Nice job by the defense. Indeed, a good play by Don McKnight. Covington had, looked like he had enough for the first down, but could not hold on to the football. And Cincinnati will take over with the ball between their 41 and 42 yard line. Cincinnati last week guilty of five turnovers and forcing only two. And that's going to be a key for the Hurricanes. They've got to be able to take the ball away from the Cincinnati offense. And Miami, very good last week, did not turn the football over. 
Yeah, Miami. Except, I'm sorry, they had one fumble. Miami no had one football and they won on first down on offense. Now they're going to have to bring their defense in. Cincinnati's offense is going to take over with great field position, but all set up by that man right there, Don McKnight. He's a senior out of Miami doing a nice job on the corner. He's going to have to play a big game, Frank. He's going to be going up against Reggie Wayne and Andre King on the outside. A lot of man-to-man, one-on-one on the inside. He'll have to win a lot of those battles for Cincinnati to be successful. And you know Cincinnati, they have the bear package on defense, the 46, and they're going to try and confuse Miami's offensive line, which has only one senior on it, and that Damon Neely, the left tackle, who was only switched to an offensive line midway through last season. So a lot of inexperience on Miami's offensive line, aside from a guy named Richard Mercier, the left guard. Other than that, not too much experience, especially on that right side. So Cincinnati's defense coming out, trying to confuse the Hurricanes. I'd like to see Miami get back to more of the running game like they did on the first drive. Well, I think they have to be more successful on first down. That'll, that'll be able to predict what defense the Bearcats are going to be in on second and medium and second and short. If they get in and lose on first down, then Cincinnati's defense can really pin their ears back and come after Scott Covington and that young offensive line. DeMarco McCleskey is the tailback. Lloyd Garden, the fullback, set behind Chad Plummer as Cincinnati puts it into play. First and 10 from their 42. Plummer still has it. To the sideline pass, incomplete, going for Jason Collins Baker up at the 47 yard line. Leonard Myers had the coverage. Yeah, the route was there on the outside. Collins Baker, just a little hitch route on the outside with a corner behind it, and that time Plummer just didn't put it on the mark. I think he held onto the football a little bit too long. He squared his shoulders around and throw it. He had him. All he had to do was put it on him. There was The coverage was not there. It was just a short route. Leonard Myers uh, playing a little bit back on the corner route. Plummer just misses the outside receiver. And Derek Ham, number 71, has to do a better job of containing the corner on that little roll, roll option that uh, Kenner run, or that uh, Plummer runs. Plummer remains the quarterback. On second and ten. Again rolling out. In trouble. And he swarmed under at the 40-yard line. It's a loss of two yards. Derek Ham, number 71, along with uh, Matt Sweeney in on the play. And lots of help there. Damian Lewis, Michael Smith also got a piece. It's a loss of two. The option taking a long time to develop in Miami. That's good for Miami's defense. They can use their speed and athletic ability to get to the outside and really pressure the quarterback. There's really nowhere to run. Strong safety, Edward Reed doing a nice job getting in between the quarterback and the pitch man. He knew he had white jerseys and help coming from the inside. That was a nice job by the strong safety, Reed. Third and 11. Deontay Kenner is the quarterback. Plummer in the slot to the top of the screen. And a timeout and penalty flags fall with 5.22 left to go in this first quarter. And the referee you saw him counting players, that is uh, James McConaughey, the official out of the Big East Conference. He's counting the Bearcats. There's and only I think 11 they got, there. Well, I don't know. They got, no yeah. foul. He miscounted. They had the tight end, three wide receivers, and only one running back. So no flag. James said, my bad. I counted a dozen, but there really were only 11. Sometimes that, Blake's, that black makes you a little hot and dizzy down there. I'll tell you what, Bearcats in all black today, and it's a pretty hot afternoon here at Nippert Stadium. Canes in their nickel defensive package. They come on the blitz. Cincinnati does a good job picking it up, and it's complete to Plummer. Delvin Brown has him, but he has a first down at the Miami 30-yard line. Miami sold out on the blitz, and Kenner and Plummer made them pay. Boy, credit Cincinnati's offense. They cha Miami changed defensive schemes during that uh, penalty that wasn't. Now they go into a little bit more secure defense. And they put Brown on the outside against Plummer. What a nice move. Sets Brown up to the inside, then breaks out. A seed thrown by the outside by Kenner, number seven. Another big play for the Cincinnati offense on third down, Frank. Chad Plummer, three receptions for 83 yards. Kenner remains the quarterback. Late substitution is Lloyd Garden in and fullback, and he cannot do that. That's an illegal substitution. McConaughey throws the flag again. And this time he has the call. Substitution infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. So that'll be first and 15 for the Bearcats with 446 left to go first quarter. Miami's pass defense been a little bit leaky. They've given up three big passing plays. And all of them to Chad Plummer. Credit Plummer's uh, great ability to get open. He's doubling as a quarterback and as a receiver. He's doing a nice job. He lines up in the slot on this formation. First and 15 for the Bearcats. Deontay Kenner, the quarterback. Three, eight, 
Three-step drop, going to the outside, knocked away by Leonard Myers. The intended receiver, Cornelius Bonner, and if Leonard Myers had caught that one, it was six points. Yeah, Leonard Myers, great timing on the outside, just a three-step drop. He read the quarterback's eyes, never took it off of him, and he just breaks on the football right here. Looks like the receiver drifts a little bit upfield, and you see the great break, the great anticipation by Leonard Myers, the sophomore out of Dillard High School. I don't care how strong a quarterback's arm is. That's a tough throw to make from the opposite hash, and it's only a four or five yard pattern down the field. That's a long throw to That's make. a long throw, you're right. Third and 15 for the Bearcats. Out of the shotgun, Kenner. Four-man rush. Ham after him. Dumps it off to the fullback. Complete to the 30, to the 25-yard line. About five yards short of the first down. The reception made by McCleskey. And Michael Smith made the tackle. Beg your pardon. That was a second down play, so it'll bring up third and five from the Miami 25-yard line. McCleskey with the catch. That is his uh, second reception of the season. A lot better than his first one. It went for minus 20 yeah, yards in the opener against Tulane. On third and five, Kenner remains the quarterback. 3.47 left to go first quarter and the clock moving. Straight drop. Over the middle, knocked down by Dan Morgan. He was going for Plummer, but Dan Morgan got in the passing lane and broke it up. Yeah, there's always so many times you can go to your man over the middle, Chad Plummer. He's going to start drawing a lot of attention, and that time there were about four or five white jerseys in the middle of the football field, and Kenner tried to still thread the needle and put it in there. You see Dan Morgan to the inside. He gets a hand on it, but take a look. Webster's there. Reed is there, and also number 24 is on the outside. It looked like number 24 for the Hurricanes, ready to deliver a blow. Joe Judge in for his second field goal attempt of the day out of Kenner's hole. Good snap. Judge with the kick. And it is through there once again. So Joe Judge two for two. And Cincinnati cuts the Miami lead to one. Three minutes, 33 seconds left to go in the first quarter here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. The Miami Hurricanes lead the Cincinnati Bearcats by a count of seven to three. The Hurricanes return home next weekend for their first important Big East challenge when Virginia Tech comes to town. Kickoff in the Orange Bowl is 8 o'clock. Fireworks, touchdown alley, great football and fun, all at an affordable price. For ticket information, call 305-284-CANES or 1-800-GO-CANES for ticket information. A look at Butch Davis, and he gets together with his kickoff uh, return team. The Hurricane defense stiffening twice down in scoring territory and forcing the Bearcats into a couple of field goals. But uh, I'm sure Butch a little bit concerned about the pass defense. They uh, have to make an adjustment on Chad Plummer, the slot receiver. Well, they're doing a nice job on the option, forcing some passing situations. Unfortunately, they're not capitalizing. You see number 22, Leonard Myers, breaking on a pass, almost catches it. And if he catches that, he goes in for six points. But definitely the pass defense right now. And credit, credit Cincinnati. They've made some nice throws and good routes. They... Uh, Kenner has stuck the ball into some tough situation, tight positions, and Plummer's come up with some big plays as we thought he would. Well, we'll see if Miami can respond on the offensive end. They've had two possessions. They have a touchdown and a turnover in Cincinnati territory as Rick Minner, either he's jotting down notes or he's getting ready for a pop final. <laughs> That's right. He's going for the quiz. A look at Kenner and Plummer, the quarterbacks for the Bearcats. Kenner, the sophomore out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And he may be the number two quarterback, but he plays a lot because they're, you see how they use Chad Plummer in uh, the slot situation, uh, kind of like slash Cordell Stewart. Uh, obviously a tremendous athlete as Plummer. How tired do you think uh, Chad Plummer is after the game? Uh, probably very sore, <laughs> especially after a day like today. That's right. Since he, as we mentioned, in the all-black unis, and it is about 85 degrees on the field. Here's the scoring drive for the Bearcats. Seven plays, 33 yards, two minutes, and 40 seconds elapsed and a 42-yard field goal from Joe Judge. Jason Mamarelli will tee it up. And James Jackson at the left side of your screen. Daryl Jones to the right Jason side. Mamarelli's, Mamarelli's put two kickoffs out of the end zone, making him seven for eight in touchbacks this season kicking off. So the Hurricanes with a 7-6 lead over the Bearcats. And you know Cincinnati would be fired up. They were really embarrassed here at home last week against Tulane. And they were upset by the fact and you knew that they were going to come out today and give it their best effort. And traditionally, they have bounced back after bad defeats. Amarelli's kick is out of the end zone once again. And for the third straight time, we've got a touchback. And the Hurricanes will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 
past couple years, Cincinnati has lost to Tulane, and they bounced back with victories against non-conference teams. Last year, they beat Kansas. So they're capable of coming back and playing good football. We'll look at Scott Covington as he leads the offense onto the field for the first time today. Covington, five of eight, 74 yards and a touchdown. 329 left to go first quarter. Miami leads at 7-6. Frank Ford and John Kajemi with you from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati here on Sports Channel. There's the hitch pass to Santana Moss. Gets a block from Fulcher, and Moss will pick up a little more than five yards before Bobby Fuller, the safety, makes the tackle. But a good gain on first down for Miami. Yeah, nice play on first down by Miami. Just a hitch screen on the outside. You see also number 40, Sean Ferguson for the Bearcats defense coming out and making the tackle. Just a fake to the outside. Scott throws a, a bullet outside. Quick, quick screen on the outside. A nice cut by Santana Moss and good downfield blocking by tight end Mondrell Fulcher. Sean Ferguson got the initial contact. And Fuller finished up on the tackle. Second and a long four for the Hurricanes. Counter play to James. He's got nowhere to go and barely holding on to the football. James getting back to the line of scrimmage. That's number 91, Paul Stevens, backup defensive end from Warren, Ohio, made the initial hit. Rob Lucas got in there to finish it off. Looks like the Bearcat defense trying to tackle the football and strip the football away from number five, Edron James. Take a look at number 91, Paul Stevens, trying to rip the football out. You see Edron trying to put two hands on the football and just secure it and then try to get upfield, but it sets up a third and five for the Hurricane offense. Loss of one for James. And as John said, it is a third and five. Miami two of three on third down conversions. Cincinnati stepping up, and here they come on the blitz. And Scott Covington overthrows Santana Moss at the 35-yard line. McKnight with the coverage, but Santana was open. Yeah, he was open on the quick slant. Scott throwing the ball high. He had pressure. He had a Bearcat defender all over him, and that, that'll cause you to throw the football high. You see the Bearcats lining up in very aggressive formation. The free safety coming in. Bobby Fuller hit Scott Covington. He really didn't get a chance to get in and throw the football the way he wanted to, step into it, and it results in a high ball. First punt of the afternoon. It'll come from Andy Crossland as he stands at his 11. That's Cornelius Bonner at the Cincinnati 35. End over end kick. Bonner says, get out of the way. And he does, and it's going to take a Miami roll inside the 25. And we'll be down by Nate Brooks. It's still going. They're using the crown on that field. And it's going to be dead right about the 20-yard line. That's where Cincinnati will take over first and 10. Looked like Nate was a, a magician there. Looked like he hit the ball a little bit and it kept rolling and the officials didn't see it. That's that was a kinda, nice play. You kind of get down there and go, yeah. <laughs> start blowing the ball down the hill. 55-yard punt, by the way. I'm almost positive Nate had a little aid to this ball. Watch him at the end when he bends down. He's trying to say, everybody get away. I'll, I'll take care of it. Take a look at his right hand. There you go. Oh, yeah, a little did. touch. Oh, he's just trying to push the wind and help the ball go. Good job, Nate. A 55-yard punt from Andy Crossland. It wasn't the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but very effective. First and 10, Cincinnati goes with the slot formation to the top of the screen. Plummer on the sprint out. Under pressure. Fumbles the football. It's loose, and I think the Bearcats got it back. Or Miami says they've got it, but let's see where they unpile. Yeah, Miami's got the football. It's number 97, Michael Lawson. As Derek Ham came in there and got a part of the sack, and the turnover gives it to the Canes at the 12-yard line of Cincinnati. That time, the Cincinnati offense was trying to give the illusion they were going to run the, the uh, option to the wide side, but Miami all day has been stringing it out. Now they're going to come off and try to throw a pass, but the pressure of Miami's defense, you see Ham and number 52, Nate Webster, collide on the football, just bounces out like a... Take a look right there. The ball just bounces out from the outside. It looked like Ham's right arm got on the football. It sports out of there. Miami recovers. Sold an opportunity for Miami. James Jackson's first carry, and down he goes. No gain. Off the bottom of the pile at 77, David Ware making the play for Cincinnati as they win on first down. A look at Michael Lawson, the senior out of Delray Beach, who came up with the football and put the Hurricanes in great position. I'm really impressed with both defenses right now. The pressure they're creating on the running game and the quarterbacks, they're doing a nice job. Miami, that time you see Michael Lawson, the right man at the right spot, gets on the football for the Miami turnover. Hurricanes can get a first down just inside the Cincinnati three. It's second and ten. Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne to the bottom of the screen. Tight end Franks to the left side of the formation. Cincinnati blitzing once again. Covington to the end zone. Santana Moss, touchdown. 
Santana Moss with a 12-yard touchdown reception, beating Don McKnight, and another nice throw by Scott Covington. Yeah, nice concentration on the outside by Santana Moss. He ran an inside corner route, did a nice job coming off the line of scrimmage. In tandem with number 87, Reggie Wayne, you'll take a look at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the inside corner route right there. He sticks him inside. Reggie Wayne keeps the cornerback low, and Santana runs the high corner. A nice ball by Scott Covington. Gave, gave his receiver a, a chance to adjust to the football, and that's what you'll see right here. You'll see Moss just idle down just a touch and can't make the catch for a hurricane touchdown. Back to live action. Andy Crossland's conversion is up and good. And with a minute and four seconds left to go in the first quarter, Miami converts on the turnover. A 12-yard pass from Scott Covington to Santana Moss. And the Canes lead it by a score of 14 to 6. Santana Moss out of Carroll City High School. And he is just a blur, runs about a 4-3. And if the Canes can get this guy in the deep routes, they're going to have quite a weapon on their hands. Well, any cornerback that faces him is going to have to really be leery of him coming out of the breaks. He does a nice job getting in and outside of his breaks. He's, he does it with great quickness. Again, 104 left to go in the first quarter. Miami with a 14-6 lead. A couple of touchdown passes from Scott Covington, one to Reggie Wayne, and one to Santana Moss. The drive, two plays, 12 yards following the Michael Lawson fumble recovery and 48 seconds off the clock. As you look at Todd Sievers, a freshman from Iowa, kicked a 63-yard field goal as a senior in high school, and that earned him a spot on the all-Madden team from John Madden, <laughs> who normally only picks NFL players. And who would think he'd put a high school kicker on the all-Madden team? That was a big thrill for Todd. Yeah, only John Madden, you're right. He's got a big leg. He proved that last week against East Tennessee State. And back once again is Cooper to the bottom of your screen and McKnight to the top. Frank Forge, John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. The Hurricanes with a couple of touchdowns, Bearcats with a couple of field goals, and we're at 14 to 6. Awaiting the Seavers kickoff. Kicks it high, a little bit short. This is McKnight at the 8. Big lane. McKnight's got a lane. Slowed up and then tackled at the 38 yard line. Mike Rumpf got in on the tackle for the Hurricanes along with uh, Wilbur Valdez, number 34, did a nice job last week on special teams. 24-yard return for McKnight. Bearcats will start first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Looks like Chad Plummer okay after that big hit on the last series by Derek Ham and Nate Webster. They collide. They, they made a sandwich, a quarterback sandwich, back around the 10-yard line. Here's the scoring drive for the Canes. As we mentioned, two plays, 12 yards, 48 seconds. As we come back to play, it's Deontay Kenner at quarterback and Plummer again, the slot receiver as they go with no tight ends, three wide outs. McCleskey has some room inside, tripped up by Nate Webster, but we'll get about six yards to the 39-yard line of Cincinnati. Nice play on first down by the Cincinnati offense coming right inside the tackles. Nate Webster makes the tackle for the Hurricane defense, but you'll see the line search. Dan Morgan tries to come up and stuff the fullback in the backfield. Does a nice job, forces him to the inside, but a nice run by McCleskey, number 31, the freshman tailback for the Bearcats. Again, three wide receivers, no tight end in the formation. Eric Beal, the fullback. DeMarco McCleskey, the tailback behind Deontay Kenner. 19 seconds left to go in the first quarter. McCleskey in motion. This is the fullback, Beal with a big hole and gets to the 45-yard line. Webster and Morgan combine on the tackle, but another pickup of six and a first down for the Bearcats as they'll move the sticks. Nice play by the motion of the fullback. The motion of the fullback you see there, Eric Beal brings number 44, Dan Morgan, out of the screen. It creates a huge hole right inside the guard tackle. You see Vince Bird, 63, sealing off the inside, and then it's, it's a clear lane to run for the Bearcat offense. And that is the end of the first quarter from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. We played 15 minutes, and after one period of play, it's the Miami Hurricanes 14, the Cincinnati Bearcats 6. We'll be right back with the second quarter here on Sports Channel right after this. Broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Deontay Kenner, 4 of 8, 93 yards as the Hurricanes begin the second quarter on defense, leading 14 to 6. First and 10 Bearcats from their 46. Plummer, the quarterback. Give to Beal, the fullback, has a hole at midfield. 
Beal inside Miami territory. Dan Morgan and Delvin Brown make the tackle, but a gain of eight. And now Cincinnati starting to find some holes in the Miami defense on the ground. Beautiful cutback by Eric Beal, the fullback. This play's designed to go off tackle. You see the uh, tackle go down, the guard pull out, but a nice, nice sight, nice judgment to cut the football back against the Miami defense. And Dan Morgan hanging on Beal's legs for the tackle. Again, Miami without the services of defensive end Quincy Hips had a irregular heartbeat yesterday and they're holding him out of the game as a precautionary measure. Second and two for the Bearcats. Kleski hit in the hole by Morgan and he's short of a first down. Give him a gain of a yard. It'll be third and very short. Michael Smith also getting in on the tackle. Miami coming with pressure defense that time, going to a man coverage. The linebackers were really snug to the line of scrimmage. You see Michael Smith saying, yeah, I was there too. Dan Morgan makes a big play, but the defense was up in pressure situation. You see 59, Michael Smith trying to fill the hole, but Dan Morgan coming in from the inside, making a big play to cause a third and very short for the Cincinnati offense. Third and about a half yard at the Miami 45 as number 68 Joe Dixon reports into the Cincinnati offensive line. Third down conversions, the Bearcats and the Hurricanes, both two of four. Double tight end set, only one wide receiver. On third and a half yard, Plummer gives it to McCleskey. Stacked up, he's gonna be close, it depends on the spot. And where the line judge has it, he may be short. I'm pretty sure they're gonna measure on this one. Yeah, they'll measure, and I don't think he got it. I think he's short by at least a half of a football. No line surge in the middle of that Bearcat offensive line. Miami doing a great job getting their pads a little bit lower than the Bearcats, and they did a nice job. Looks like it's gonna come up with a fourth down, but they will measure. Adrian Wilson, number 96, Matt Sweeney, number 98, getting in there and stacking up the pile. And referee James McConaughey says timeout. We're gonna measure this one. Certainly Cincinnati, I would think, would go for it. They obviously have nothing to lose. They're trailing 14 to six and playing fairly well against Miami. It's certainly much better than they played against Tulane last week. Looks like there's a lot of room in that last play right over the center for a quarterback sneak. And as you said, we said they're a full football short of that first down, but Miami giving up that, that gap, that zero gap over the center. I'd like to see the quarterback sneak just go ahead and try to get the first down for this Bearcat offense. Chad Plummer over at the sideline talking with his coaches. As you see, it's fourth down upcoming with 13 minutes, 32 seconds left to go in the second quarter and the Hurricanes holding a 14 to six lead. So from just inside the Miami five, the Bearcats will try it on fourth and about the length of a football. Again, the power formation in there. Kleski the tailback, Beal the fullback. It's Beal the fullback, should have the first down, not much more than that. As the Hurricanes stack him up, Michael Smith along with Matt Sweeney making the play. And Morgan also gets a piece, but it should be enough for the first down at the Miami 44-yard line. Yeah, nice job by Eric Beal. He's a little fire plug. He got his shoulder pads pretty low, and he exploded off that line of scrimmage. Take a look. Not a lot of line surge by the offensive line, but just enough for Eric to stretch the football over, over about a yard, yard and a half. He just barely got the first down. Well, first and 10 from just inside the Miami 44. A look at the first down. Cincinnati with five, Miami with six. Again, three wide receivers set. Plummer, the quarterback. Straight drop, fake pattern, and good coverage. The receiver pushed off and caught the ball out of bounds, and Leonard Myers says, hey, where's the flag? And clearly from up here, we could see Jason Collins Baker push Myers in the back. Yeah, he definitely adjusted Leonard Myers shoulder pads on that play, but the ball really drifted him out of bounds and Collins Baker has to give his quarterback Chad Plummer some room on the sidelines to deliver the football. The ball carried the receiver out of bounds. As you can see, a nice coverage, a nice position by Leonard Myers, the Miami quarterback, but that ball has to come about four or five yards a little bit closer to, to, the, uh, to the numbers for a chance to give that receiver a chance to go up and make a play. Second and 10. Kenner now the quarterback. Plummer in the slot to the bottom of your screen. And that is he in motion. Kenner under pressure. Gets out of the pocket. Nate Webster chasing him. Kenner eludes him. And Dan Morgan makes the tackle at the Miami 37-yard line. That's a pickup of close to seven, and it will bring up third and short for the Bearcats. Well, you've seen Chad Plummer run with the football. Now you see Kenner, number seven. He wants to deliver the football down the field, feels pressure from the inside from Lewis, makes a nice cut on the outside there on middle linebacker Nate Webster, and Dan Morgan comes in and delivers a punishing hit to the quarterback. Third and three for the Bearcats, 12-20 left to go second quarter.
Kenner on the sidelines, and Plummer will be the quarterback on this third and three. Double tight end for Cincinnati, Josh Anderson and Ashley Hunt. On the option, but whistle stop it before play can really get underway. And my partner, John Congemi, was signaling to me option, option. And he is correct. Don't be afraid to say it, John. <laughs> I'm not. I don't want to be wrong all the time. Back it up. Dead ball. Delay of the game. Did not On get the, the playoff offense. in time. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. Now that's an important penalty there because that goes from third and three to third and eight and will change Cincinnati's thinking and indeed their offensive package on the field. Yeah, definitely. They'll change at quarterback now. Kenner looks like he'll go back to the quarterback spot with Plummer trying to get him the football down the field. Two of five on third down are the Bearcats. Look at the penalty numbers. Cincinnati, the only guilty party so far. Again, three wide outs in the formation. Kenner, with time, throws it short, and if he had thrown it well, it would have been intercepted by Leonard Myers, who just blanketed Cornelius Bonner. You gotta hang that a little bit on the wide receiver, too. Cornelius Bonner went down and ran a hook route, but never came back to the football, and it looked like Leonard Myers broke like the receiver should have. Kenner going back, wanting to get the football to the inside to Plummer, elects to go to the outside, but you'll see the, the quarterback cuts to the football before Bonner, the receiver, does. So a little miscommunication. Bonner has to get back inside of the, that defensive back and give his quarterback a chance. There's Adam Wolfeck, a walk-on, who averaged 45.3 on four punts last week. Leonard Myers back to receive for the Hurricanes. Wolfeck hangs it high. Myers is going to let it go, and this is going out of the end zone. And Miami will start first and 10 at the 20-yard line on the touchback. So only a 22 net on the punt, excuse me, a 25 net on the punt. And the Hurricanes will begin first and 10 with 11.49 left to go second quarter. It's Miami 14, the Bearcats 6. Eleven forty-nine left to go second quarter. Hurricanes lead at 14-6. They start first and 10 from their own 20. Edger and James finds a little bit of a crease and gets about five yards out just across the 25-yard line before the Cincinnati defense will close down on him. Kevin Ward, number 77, making the tackle, but James gains five on first down. He now has seven carries for 37 yards, or 36 yards, excuse me. Frank, I'm sure Rick Minner is happy to see his team compete today against Miami. Last week, they kind of laid down. As you, you take a look at Scott Covington, 7 of 11 for 92 yards and two scores today. One on the outside to Santana Moss and one to Reggie Wayne. Santana Moss, by the way, his first collegiate touchdown reception. He did have a touchdown on a running play, a reverse last year against Arkansas State. Second and five for the Canes and whistle stop play. Looks like a delay of game. Miami will not get it off. And they'll march off five and it will bring up second and ten. That's the kind of penalty, John, that Miami avoided last week. They avoided the offsides and procedures. They had a couple of uh, late hits and aggressive offensive linemen running downfield, but they really avoided the delay a game type of thing. Yeah, and another thing that does is erase a nice first down uh, carry by Edron James, brings it to second and 10 now. Miami probably going to use a little play action. I'd like to see him get the ball to tight end in this man-to-man -man coverage. Instead, it's a counter play to James. Trying to get the corner. Edger into the 25. Gets all the yardage back on the penalty and picks up a couple more. Hassan Champion, number 48, the outside linebacker, making the tackle. 10.42 left to go. Eight for 43 yards now for Edger and James as we take another look. Edger does a nice job on the counter play, showing his patience, following Nick Williams, the fullback, cuts inside, then dips back out, then shows you that burst of speed, and he gets about four or five yards going right through the arm tackles of Cincinnati Bearcat defenders. So a nice gain on second down. Third and three for Miami. James again behind a Mercier block. Has enough for the first down. Won't get much more. And Bobby Fuller finally wrestles him down at the 31-yard line. It's a gain of four, but is it, it is enough to move the sticks for the Hurricanes. Wow, give some credit that time to Bubba Franks. The tight end lines up on the left side next to Neely and Richard Mercier. He does a terrific job of just jamming down that Bearcat defensive front, allowing Edron James to bounce it to the outside. A nice first down for the Miami Hurricane offense. And looks like Cincinnati's really tightened up against the run after that opening possession. James is finding the going a little bit tough 
broke off 31 yards on three carries in Miami's opening drive, but has now nine for 47. So you can see how they have tightened up on the defense. Hurricanes will call a timeout here. 9.56 left to go in the second quarter. We'll take a break in the action from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. It's Miami 14, Cincinnati 6. Back with more football from Cincinnati right after this. Join Sports Channel Florida every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. for the Butch Davis Show. The Canes leader shows you all the hard-hitting highlights and previews the upcoming opponent. It's all right here on Sports Channel Florida, the Butch Davis Show, hosted by Frank Fort. That's right. First and 10 Hurricanes at the 31-yard line. Play action from Covington. Over the middle, under throws, Andre King, and we got a penalty flag thrown right at the feet of Damon Neely. Miami's left offensive tackle, so we'll check out the call here. It came from the headlinesman. It is holding against the Hurricanes. It's got to go against Damon Neely, the left tackle. He's the only one near that penalty flag, and it came from what looked like the Cincinnati bench. So they will mark it off from the spot of the foul, which was the 26-yard line. And this is going to cost Miami closer to 15 yards than 10. Here's the call from James McConaughey. Holding. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. Let's take another look at uh, 75, Damon Neely. It's either Bubba Franks or Damon Neely. And take a look. It looks like the, the pin and the takedown by number 75, Damon Neely. And they also get some pressure on Scott Covington. This Bearcat defense both times the last two series on first down, causing Miami penalties. On first and 26, Edger and James dancing in the hole, and he will not get away from number 22. On, that's Dewan Gossett, the outside linebacker. Yeah, Gossett, number 19, Don McKnight. Trying to ignite this defense. The Bearcats really playing inspired ball on the defensive side. Take a look, the pressure in the backfield. Nice hole, nice cutback that time by Edron James. But you see 22, Gossett get up and, and butt up Edron James. And then he got some help from the secondary. And number 19, Don McKnight, forcing a long second, for the hur second, the second down for the Hurricanes. Second and 24 for Miami. Double wide receiver to the top of the screen. Bubba Franks, the tight end, to the bottom. Covington with time. Now moving around and has to take it under and get across the 15 to the 16-yard line. He'll go for a loss of maybe a yard. Kevin Ward, number 77, on the tackle. And Nick Williams, the fullback, really should have flared out and given his, his quarterback some help. Nick was blocking and then turned around looked at Scott and really just stood there instead of calling for the ball and giving his quarterback some help. Looked like Miami went to a maximum protection uh, front that time, keeping everybody in and only sending two people out in the pass pattern. You see Bubba Franks and, and Nick uh, Williams over to the left side. Scott was looking for some help, couldn't find any, decided just get what I can, but it sets up a third and long for the Hurricanes. Third and 25 for Miami. Blitz coming, Miami picks it up. Covington deep for Moss, who stumbled and ball falls incomplete in Cincinnati territory. Bobby Fuller on the coverage, rather Sean Ferguson, number 40, and that'll bring up a punting situation for the Hurricanes. First down has, has been really a detriment to this Miami offense the last couple of series. That aided with pressure by this Bearcat defense, really throwing Scott Covington in the offense out of rhythm. Cornelius Bonner will go back to receive the punt of Andy Crossland as Andy stands at his own three-yard line. Not a good offensive series for Miami. Here they come. And Crossland gets away a nice kick. Bonner says, let's get out of the way, and the punt will go out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Cincinnati. And that's where the Bearcats will take over first and 10 with 8 minutes and 14 seconds left to go in the second quarter. A 37-yard punt, no return for Andy Crossland. Bearcats will bring it in play from their 47 when we come back here in the second quarter. It's Miami 14, Cincinnati 6, 8-14 left to play in the second. We'll be right back. Support UN student athletes by making a donation to the Hurricane Club. Every dollar raised goes toward the Student Athlete Scholarship Fund. Support Hurricane Athletics making your donation today to the Hurricane Club at 305 284 6699 or 1 800 Go Canes. First and 10 Cincinnati at their 47 yard line. It's Kenner at quarterback with Bonner in the slot to the bottom of the screen. Quick three step drop, the catch by Plummer at the 50, down the sideline, gets away from one. Gets away from the pack of canes, and look out. 
Derek Ham, fumble, Edward Reed on the hit. Michael Burrow has the recovery, and the Canes will have it first and 10 at the 20 yard line. So the Canes give up a big play, but a big hit by Edward Reed forces the second turnover of the day. Edward Reed staying on the play, hustling down the field, ends up popping the football loose from Chad Plummer. And Michael Burrow, as you said, Frank, picks up the ball, just a hit screen to the outside, a nice throw and catch on the outside, great block on the outside by Bonner, number three. Then you see, watch this move by Plummer on the sidelines. He has four Hurricanes, five Hurricanes coming at him. He puts the brakes on, cuts it down the field, good downfield block, and we watch the hit from the backside right here from number 20, Reed. After a couple bounces, number 93, Michael Burrow, the junior, picks it up in a big turnover by this Hurricane defense. So the Hurricanes give up a big play, but force the turnover at the end of it, give the football back to the offense. Stretch play, James trying to get the corner and does. He picks up about five or six yards before he's shoved out of bounds. They'll give him five. It'll bring up second and five at the Miami 25-yard line. Slow to get up on the sideline is Don McKnight, number 19, who shoved him out of bounds. A look at Chad Plummer, who has caught uh, four passes today for 56 yards, but uh, coughed up the football on the last one. And so the Canes come up with their second big turnover. Plummer never saw Reed from the backside. He had already faked him out once, thinking there was only one man to beat to the inside, and that was a Miami defensive uh, defender coming from his left, but he coughed up the football and a big turnover by the Hurricanes. Second and five with 7.54 to go, second quarter. Moss in motion, Edger and James. Again, tries to get to the outside and does, and James will have the first down up at the Miami 34-yard line. Hassan Champion making the tackle for the Cincinnati defense. Two plays in a row, Frank Edra James showing his speed to the outside. First to the left, following Nick Williams. Now he comes back just on a sprint play to the right side, to the wide side of the field. Again, following Nick Williams. They were trying to kick everybody out so Edron could go inside. He thought better of it, uses his speed to the outside, and sprints to the first down. Gain of nine on the play. You see Edgerin's numbers, 12 for 61. He had 77 last week in limited action. Hurricanes with the first and 10 at their 34. Counter play to James. Gets a good block from Williams. Penalty flag down. This will come back going against the Hurricanes as James picked up about six, but a flag down right in the middle of the offensive line. These are killers on first down, John. That's three times in a row Miami's been stopped by themselves on first down in consecutive series by a penalty. This time it looks like a hold in the middle of that offensive line. Good look at Edger and James, the junior out of Immokalee, Florida. So for the second series in a row, Miami gets a hold on a first down run, a play, and that, that really just is a killer. You take a look on the middle, middle of your screen. On the offense. You can't see it from here. From I don't see a scrimmage. hold from here. It looks like a lot down. of good blocks by Miami staying high, but obviously the, uh, the official in the middle of the football field saw a, a holding play. It might have been uh, in the interior, and you couldn't see it on the replay. So the penalty marched off against Miami back to the 24-yard line. It's an 11-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, and it'll bring up first down and 20. Look at the penalty numbers. All of Miami's penalties coming here in the second quarter. Here's a quick three-step drop. Covington goes back further, fires outside, complete to Moss at the 35, wrestled out at the 37-yard line by Dewan Gossett. A nice play on first down for Miami, got back all the penalty yardage and uh, three or four more, so it'll bring up second and about six or seven. Yeah, Scott doing a nice job changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Elects to go back a little further. Great protection this time. You can see nobody in the passing lane. That's when Scott Covington or any quarterback is going to excel. There's nobody in front of him. He can stand tall in the pocket, deliver a strikeout to Santana Moss on the outside, and gets, a, uh, gets it back into a respectable second and seven. 8 of 13 for Covington, 104 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. On second and seven, Mondral Fulcher, the second tight end in motion. And the give to James, penalty flag down. James with a big hole, 40, 45, and taken down at the Miami 48-yard line. But again, I think this one probably will come back. Penalty flag on the far side of the field. James had plenty for a first down, got about 10 or 11 yards, but we'll check out the call from the Big East officiating crew. Offside on the defense. So I stand corrected there. Miami will take the play and give Edger and James a pickup of 10 out to the 48-yard line. Offside on the defense. The penalties decline. Result of the play, first down. 
First down, Hurricanes with seven minutes, 11 seconds left to go second quarter. Here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Miami leads it 14 to six. See if Miami tries to stay with the run or tries to hit a home run on first down here. Reggie Wayne, Andre King, the wide receivers in the ball game. And a double tight end, that's Mondral Fulcher in motion behind his quarterback. And both sides moved. Although Miami's left side of the offensive line came off the football. Yeah, it looked like they may get Damon Neely on the outside, depending on which which one they saw first. Looked like Damon Neely fired out, but the middle of that uh, Bearcat line also was jumping around. That ball, ball start. Yeah. On the offense, five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat. Damon tried to hold his water, but that's a lot of water at 6'3 and 300 pounds. He was going forward. He couldn't stop. Second penalty on Neely as an individual here in the second quarter. He had a hold earlier. So the Canes will go first and 15 now from their own 43-yard line. Again, a double tight end. Only one back behind Covington. Three-step drop. Quick out. Mondral Fulcher at the 48. Gets to the 49-yard line. Bobby Fuller hanging on around the legs. It's a pickup of six, and it will bring up second and nine. Fuller, Good play by Miami, trying to get a little bit of that penalty yards back. They find their tight end for the first time today, Mondrell Fulcher, for his first reception on the afternoon. And in fact, the first reception of the season for Mondrell Fulcher, the 6'2", 245-pound tight end, junior out of Coffeyville, Kansas. Scott Covington now 9 of 14 for 106 yards. Good look at Mondrell Fulcher, who really is about as good a blocker as you're going to want to find as a tight end, but he can catch the football too. In fact, he was a high school quarterback and came to Miami as a wide receiver, and now Covington takes a timeout with the play clock down to one. So the Hurricanes doing some things that they didn't do in the opener, a little slow getting the plays in from the sideline. And Butch Davis is going to let him hear about it. He's calling the offense over to the sideline, and he wants him to get in and out of the huddle. Um, with uh, six minutes and six seconds left to go here in the second quarter, it's Miami 14, Cincinnati 6. We'll take a timeout at Nipper Stadium. We'll be right back on Sports Channel right after this. Back at Nippert Stadium, and so far, this is the only injury today to a Bearcat cheerleader. Looks like she turned an ankle, and hopefully on this artificial turf, we don't get any players hurt. It's always a scary thing when you go on the road and play on artificial turf. For the first time, the Canes on, on turf this season, and so far, they flew around on defense. They have to make some, some big plays on offense, though. Second and nine for Miami. Covington. Time, flag down. On the outside, Mondral Fulcher makes the catch, shoved out of bounds by Harper. Eric Harper making the tackle, but uh, gained down to the 30-yard line. Now let's check out the flag. It looked like Cincinnati jumped and maybe penetrated the neutral zone. If the play stands, it'll be a 21-yard gain. Offside on the defense. Fine. First down. Man-to-man -man coverage by Cincinnati. You'll see in the middle of that football screen, number 96. David Vitovitz jumps off. Was Vitovitz on the inside, but Scott Covington taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coverage for his tight end, Mondro Fulcher, on number six, Eric Harper. First and 10 at the 30. James hit in the backfield, squirms away, and gets a yard out of it as Eric Harper came in blitz on the safety blitz, and then Derek David Jackson cleaned up, but uh, James fortunate to get a yard. That's one thing you'll see with a pressure defense. When they get burned for a big play, they like to come back and do what they do best and put pressure on that offensive line. That time you see eight black jerseys with an untouched strong safety. Number, number six, Eric Harper making contact deep in that Miami backfield, but Edron James carries him forward for a one-yard gain. Second and nine Hurricanes at the Cincinnati 29. Covington, quick drop. Now looking to ad lib. He should just throw that away, and he does as he overthrows Reggie Wayne down near the goal line. That was a smart one by Scott. Just throw that ball away as Sean Ferguson and Bobby Fuller had Reggie Wayne locked up. The initial pattern just didn't develop or didn't work. It was a quick play, and Dewan Gossett, the linebacker, the weak side linebacker, was right in the throwing lane. A nice job by Scott Covington. As you see his numbers, he's thrown for 132 yards on 11 completions for two touchdowns. But as you said, Frank, a smart play. Tried to make something happen, and then he threw it out of the back of the end zone where he wouldn't get into a bad play, but it'll bring up a third and nine for the Hurricane offense. Five minutes, 18 seconds left to go second quarter. Hurricanes with three wideouts, Fulcher the tight end, and James the lone running back. He's got James in the flat wide open, instead throws and deflected away by Gossett and out of bounds, and 
That was a bad choice by Scott. He had James wide open in the flat, nobody within 10 yards of him. Scott really got locked into a receiver down the field. He got locked into Reggie Wayne on a comeback. Number 22, Dewan Gossett was down the field, almost looked like he had double coverage. He had the flat, but decided to drop back 15 or 20 yards. All he had to do was dump the football down to the right or down to his tight end, Mondrell Fulcher. As you see, number five, no one in the screen next to Edron James. Jeff Popovich will hold, and it's a fake field goal, and the Canes have a lot of yardage. Popovich will get the first down inside the 20-yard line. Miami with the fake field goal. Rob Lucas made the tackle, but it is a hurricane first down. Nice caught, call by Butch Davis and the uh, special team staff. Jeff Popovich, the master of everything you see there, gets a pat on the backside by Butch Davis coming in. Nice play, looked like an option play with Andy Crossland being the pitch man, but Popovich doing a nice job. You see the defense in front of Miami walling everybody down. Now it's tough inside running after breaking the line of scrimmage and Popovich goes over the top. For Kane, first down. First down at the 17 yard line of Cincinnati. 4.50 left to go, second quarter. James behind some good blocks to the 15. Hassan Champion got a piece, but James drags it down to the 11 yard line. Nice effort. Bobby Fuller and Champion made the tackle, but a nice effort on first down by Edger and James got him six. Hard, tough nose running by Edger and James. That's what he's known for. He'll, he'll bust it up the middle with the best of you and, and carry some tacklers on the outside, but Edger and James. Productive on first down. That's what Miami has to do. Get some yards on first down and make the defense of Cincinnati come, become very predictable. Again, going back to the fake field goal, Popovich threw a touchdown pass last year on a fake. This time he runs for the first down. On second down, James trying to get the corner. Being chased by Kowasi Daniels, James dives for the pylon and gets a touchdown. The field judge signaling touchdown, Edger and James from 12 yards out, and Miami has scored their third touchdown of the day. Edger shows you his power on the play before. Now he's still got enough speed, enough gas in the tank to take it from one side of the field to the other for a hurricane touchdown. Just terrific outside speed by Edger and James. Take a look at Nick Williams, the fullback. He takes a big hit by Eddie Johnson, 52, allowing Edger and James to outrace the middle linebacker, number 44, Daniels, and a host of Bearcats. You see the free safety, number 10, Bobby Fuller trying to come and make the tackle. But as you said, Frank, he just reaches over the pylon for a hurricane touchdown. On the extra point, flags flew before the ball was snapped, and we'll check out the penalty here. Edger and James, 16 carries, 92 yards, and a touchdown. As you get a look at EJ. That ball. Illegal substitution on the defense and Miami will get to re-kick it. Another look at the touchdown from Edger and James. Nice lead block by Williams, the fullback, 36. You see, even though he gets knocked back, he makes a stalemate of the linebacker. That gives Edger a chance to pick and choose where he wants to go with the football, and then just great athletic ability trying to reach the ball over the goal line for the score. Out of the Popovich hold, Andy Crossland will attempt the conversion, as you saw Edger and James' numbers on the afternoon kick from Crossland is good and with four minutes and five seconds left to go in the second quarter Miami has stretched their lead to 21-6 so John we go back to two things number one the turnover created by the defense back at the Miami 20-yard line results in an 80-yard drive and kept alive by the fake field goal and a 12-yard run for a first down by Jeff Popper. It's good to see special teams create an opportunity for the offense that's what they didn't do last year and in the first two ball games special teams has played a big part in the success of the Miami offense there getting great field position on fourth down and Edron James takes it the rest of the way for the touchdown. The offense really combating the pressure of the Bearcat defense with some highlights uh, in the backfield, all led by number five, Edron James. There's a good look at Edron James, the junior out of Immokalee, Florida, became Miami's third ever 1,000-yard back last year. That's 1,000 yards in a single season. Miami's only had three of them, and EJ is one. Well, he deserves to be in the cool zone right now because he's carried the load for this Miami offense. It's a good time possibly to see James Jackson or Nigel Davenport get in the game with only 4.05 left before halftime. Give Edron a couple more minutes to get fresh. Well, the Hurricane defense has to figure out a way to get the grips on Chad Plummer, who has four catches for 116 yards and uh, did force him to fumble after that last catch, but he's put up some, some big yardage and some big plays. Seavers will kick it off. McKnight, number 19, Cooper, number 33, back to receive. Here's the kick from Seavers. Hits it very high and pretty deep. That's McKnight three yards deep. McKnight got around Popovich, but then is stuck at the 17-yard line. 
as the Hurricane special teams number 48, Chris Campbell, making the play for Miami. Chris Campbell humming down the football field that time for Miami on special teams. He's a freshman linebacker. He'll back up Michael Smith at that, at that strong side linebacker. He was coming really untouched down the middle of that football field. A nice job. You'll see him take a look at the middle of your screen right there, number 48. Just sends number 19 on the special teams, Don McKnight, backwards for the Bearcats. Chris Campbell, the freshman out of Mount Pleasant, Texas, with the big hit on special teams, laid the wood to Don McKnight on first down. This is Plummer, at quarterback. Give to the fullback, Beal. Dan Morgan has him at the 17, wrestles him down at the 18-yard line, picked up about five, with 3.45 left to go first half. Important right now for Cincinnati to use the clock for the three minutes and 40 seconds and counting before halftime to take the ball and put some points on the scoreboard. They'd like to get in with a touchdown, but they'll take a field goal just to show Miami they're in this ball game. They're not going to lay down now after three scores. Give them a gain of six on the play to the fullback Beal. It'll bring up second and four. Kenner now the quarterback. The give to 33, Robert Cooper gets to the 20-yard line, short of a first down by three yards, gained only about a yard. Dan Morgan in there for the Hurricanes once again, along with Nate Webster, his cohort at linebacker, number 52, out of Miami Northwestern High School. Frank, also a nice play by Michael Burrow, the junior, who gets his first start today. He was really submarining on that offensive line. He gets low. You see him on the outside. He pushes downside and comes inside and does a nice job of making the back cut to the inside. You see Morgan and Nate Webster, but good job by Burrow holding his ground to the outside and then coming back and forcing the running back inside. And Cincinnati with the play clock winding down as you take a look at the third down conversions. We'll call a timeout as the Bearcats only had six on the play clock and they have used up their allotments of uh, allotment of timeouts here in the first half, which has 244 to run. As you see the quarterback, Deontay Kenner at the sideline. Bearcats facing a third and three from their own 21-yard line. Miami leading 21 to six. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you here on Sports Channel as we bring you Hurricane football. Miami trying to go 2-0 and and Cincinnati trying to bounce back from a devastating loss to Tulane last week, a conference game in their home opener, and you lose 52-34. You want to bounce back rather quick, and that man, Rick Minter, we were told was really Pretty stern with his team this week, especially on the defensive side of the football. When that game, Tulane kept their first team in the entire ball game, and they wanted to really prove a point in the conference. You know, Cincinnati got the call last year to go to that bowl game, and Tulane, even though they had a better record, didn't. So they, I think they wanted to prove a point to the uh, Bearcat uh, team on their home opener. Cincinnati with five first downs here in the first half, although they have hit a couple of big plays. Again, two minutes, 44 seconds to go. As you look at Chad Plummer, the quarterback, they had 21 first downs last week against Tulane. So from that standpoint, at least, the Hurricane defense has done pretty well. Plummer in the slot to the top of the screen, as Kenner is the quarterback. McCleskey and Nathan Wise, number 32, now in the backfield. Kenner, under some pressure, flares it out to McCleskey. McCleskey run out of bounds by Dan Morgan, but should have enough for the first down out to the 25-yard line. It's a pickup of four, but it is enough for the first down with two minutes, 38 seconds left to go. Nice job by the Bearcat offense. They get the reception and they get out of bounds. Looked like they wanted to go to the left side with a, t a type of rub or a pick play. Miami did a good job to the wide side of the field. Quarterback has to dump the football off to the freshman, McCluskey. He gets enough yardage for the first down and gets out of bounds, stopping the clock. Deontay Kenner, 6 of 11 for 131 yards, and now we will work out of the shotgun. Surprised Miami isn't in the nickel package. Kenner, under some pressure, will throw it deep, and it is caught, and it is a reception by Bonner, and now the referee says no. Hold on a second. Cornelius Bonner made the catch, but he is ruled out of bounds. Well, I'd like to see that again. It looked like Bonner got his right foot in. He may have been out of bounds before, though, with his left foot. We'd have to take a look at it again. You'll see Bonner on the inside corner. A nice throw by Kenner to the outside, but it, it looked like a very close call on the outside. The backside official furthest from the play looked like made the, the signal that it was no good. You see number 93, Burrow, hammering the quarterback. Kenner, but he delivered a strike. See if we can take a look at his right foot, the receiver right there. He just had a big toe on the line. It looked line. like a good call by the official. Second and 10. Kenner again out of the shotgun. Perot with pressure. Here goes Kenner. Kenner to the 30. 
And Nate Webster pulls him down after a pickup of nine yards. It'll bring up third and one. And that's what the Canes don't want to do. You don't want to let this kid move around and hurt you because that's where he is most effective. He is effective once he breaks containment, but you like to see, Frank, the pressure that Miami front four, they're making him feel uncomfortable in that pocket. They just need to keep the inside tackles in those in those pass lanes so they can clean up the, the help done on the outside by Derek Ham and Michael Burrow. Two minutes to go first half and the clock moving, third and one. McCleskey and Garden set behind the quarterback. Kenner. That's Garden, the fullback. And Garden will throw a first down to the 37-yard line. I've been waiting all week I to say that. I know you have. <laughs> Pick up a three for the Miami defense got there. Michael Smith, along with Dan Morgan, making the play. And they'll stop the clock while they move the chains. A minute 47 left to go, left to go in the first half. Third and one, just straight ahead running. Nice job by the Bearcat offensive line the left side. Yolen Bird did a nice job of creating a seam for Garden to slip through from the Bearcat 37. Out of the shotgun, Kenner. Complete to Bonner at the 44, dragged down right away by Nate Brooks with help from Michael Smith. And it's a pickup of seven on first down. Kenner getting into a nice rhythm, throwing the football. He's getting some time, and he's found Bonner the last two times. One time on the far side of the field, he was it was no good, it was out of bounds. He had a foot on the line. That time, Bonner stays in bounds, and a nice throw by Kenner. Steps up in the pocket, has time, nobody in front of him, throws a strike to the outside. Bonner does the wise thing, tries to slip a tackle, then gets hit out of bounds by number 59, Smith. Second and four with a minute 30 to go in the second quarter. Kenner again out of the shotgun. Over the middle, complete to McCleskey, and Dan Morgan tripped him up nicely, but not before McCleskey had a first down, and we got a penalty. Could be roughing the passer on Miami. Looked like Michael Lawson was in late and also Derek Ham, but Lawson may have been the victim on a, on a uh, late hit on the quarterback. So the gain was six for a first down and they'll tack on 15. That's just not a smart play with a minute 27 left to go in the first half. No, you don't want to do that, Frank, and Miami did this in their first ball game, some unnecessary penalties. Roughing the passer on the defense, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Let's take another look. Down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see number 97, Michael Lawson, but it's Ham and Lawson. Ham had two and a half steps to, to really gather himself before he hit the quarterback. Just unnecessary down in the stretch. You give the Bearcat offense another 15 yards, and now the ball's on the 36-yard line of the Hurricane defense. A minute 21 to go. A look at Derek Ham, the senior out of Merritt Island. Did pick up a sack last week against East Tennessee State, but I'm sure he'd like to have that play back. On that last pass play, uh, number four, Plummer, was wide open down in the middle of the field. Take a look if they go to him here. Kenner, the quarterback, with McCleskey in motion. And Beal, the fullback, big hole. Tripped up by Delvin Brown. Ball came loose. Miami says they have it, but the officials say he was down. The ground caused the football to come out. It's a game down to the 24-yard line, a pickup of 12 and a first down. Nice job by the center, Doug Roosevelt, in the middle of that Bearcat D offensive line. Take a look right there. There's a huge hole for Garden to run through, and he strides for 12 yards for a Bearcat first down. And you could tell the ground really did not cause the ball. The ball was coming out as he was hit from behind. It looked like a fumble. First and 10, Bearcats to the Miami 24. Kenner out of the shotgun to the outside, complete to the quarterback Plummer, but driven out of bounds by Edward Reed, and they're gonna keep the clock moving. They say the contact came in bounds and a very short gain of only a yard, so a nice play by Edward Reed. Only 28 seconds, 27 now, and the clock moving. Cincinnati is out of timeouts. That's a strange call. The Bearcats are being penalized for it. They're really unorganized out on the football field. They're trying to get a play called. They have no timeouts, 14, 13 and counting. They need to try to get to the end zone so they have a chance to uh, kick, kick a field goal after this play. Kenner again out of the shotgun. Ham with pressure. That ball's floated up to the end zone and knocked away as uh, Bonner almost, Plummer rather, almost came up with a tremendous catch. And a penalty flag on the far side of the field. May have it on the offense, but maybe not in the right formation because there was a lot of unorganization. There was not a lot of organization on the offensive side of the football field that time. It looks like they may not have had enough people on a line of scrimmage. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. As usual, my partner is right on it. 
And let's take a look at the formation. And a little hard to see, but you can see the wide receiver up near the first down marker is off the line of scrimmage, so the tackle on that side is uncovered, and that's an illegal formation. Exactly. Nobody's on the line of scrimmage, even on the far side. When you have your single receiver, he should be on the line of scrimmage, and he's not. That'll back it up five yards with two seconds left, Frank, for a field goal opportunity. And the officials call time as an injury on the field. Jason Collins Baker is down in the end zone, and that's just now is getting up with the assistance of the training staff. Let's go back to that play where Plummer caught the ball. The contact occurred inbounds, and, and now the, what the, I've been told by officials, if the contact occurs inbounds and the defensive player doesn't really carry the guy out of bounds in his arms if, if the momentum is stopped and the guy kind of goes out of bounds on his own they're going to keep the clock running so that's something a little bit new that the officials are doing this year i talked to a head official and he said look for that because it's going to happen it's not automatically going to stop the clock when somebody goes out of bounds and that's a tough call in that situation frank because you're trying to stop the clock receivers are taught no matter what get out of bounds but it may not uh, be to their advantage they might as well go down and run back and try to run another play the hold from Deontay Kenner at the 35-yard line. Joe Judge will attempt his third field goal of the afternoon. Snap is good. Hold is good. Judge puts it up and pushes this one wide to the right. So the first half ends with the Cincinnati missed field goal from Joe Judge. He'll have to settle for being two out of three. And at the end of the first half, it is Miami 21, Cincinnati 6. We'll be back with halftime highlights, statistics, and more activities. We'll have an interview coming up for you right after this on Sunshine. Miami leads at 21-6 at the end of the first half. Miami Hurricanes lead the Cincinnati Bearcats 21-6 at halftime here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. Here's a look at the halftime numbers. Hurricanes with a nice job running the football, and both teams have done well throwing it, John. Third down conversions pretty even. The two turnovers the Canes created uh, really helped them out in the first yeah, half. Yeah, nice balance by pass and run with Miami in the first half, getting to that 21-point score. I'd like to see him do a better job on first down coming out in the second half. And individual numbers. Scott Covington with a nice first half working. Edger and James only eight yards shy of 100. Reggie Waynes had a good first half. For the Bearcats, Deontay Kenner, 9 of 16, 145 yards. And Chad Plummer, the starting quarterback who goes into the slot on third down, is at a big first half, although he was guilty of one fumble deep in Miami territory. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the second half kickoff here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. It's Miami 21, Cincinnati 6. University of Miami football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by your South Florida Chevrolet dealers. Chevy's got something for you. By Hip Health Plan of Florida. So where do you get your health care? And by Pro Player Sports Apparel. You have a life? Look good in it. Ready for second half action at Nippert Stadium as the Bearcat getting together with a couple of youngsters here enjoying football on the University of Cincinnati campus. Nippert Stadium holds 35,000. They expected a crowd of oh, about 25 or so today. The students are not in session right now. They go by quarters here at Cincinnati. So the students are not on campus at the moment. Look at Butch Davis and his team playing a pretty solid first half with a 21 to 6 lead. And Cincinnati will receive the kickoff to start the second half, going from left to right on your screen. Don McKnight and Robert Cooper back to receive the kickoff of Todd Seavers of the Hurricanes. A look at Rick Minter in his fifth year at the University of Cincinnati, trying to lead them to the, their fourth straight winning season, and that's only happened once before in UC history. John, also an interesting thing we saw before the game, Cincinnati is the fifth longest running team in terms of playing college football. They started, what was it, 1885? A long time ago, Frank, in, in, in an old stadium. A lot of tradition here at the University of Cincinnati. They're trying to get back on the scoreboard to start this third quarter. Here's Seavers kickoff. Tries to go near corner, bounces it to the end zone, and it reached the end zone for a touchback. Fans down in that corner didn't appreciate the call, but the Bearcats will start first and 10 at their own 20. Bearcats scored field goals the first two times they touched the football, but on their last four possessions, they did not score. In fact, turned the ball over twice on fumbles, once at their own 12, once at the Miami 20. So key turnovers in the first half. As you look at Chad Plummer, who will start the second half under center at quarterback. Bearcats go with the double wide receiver left. Eric Beal is the fullback in front of DeMarco McCleskey. This is Beal, the fullback. Squirts through and picks up almost six on the first down play. Delvin Brown making the tackle for Miami along with Dan Morgan. 
The fullback has done a lot more damage than the tailback in this game for Cincinnati. Cincinnati's had some, a lot of success on that belly play. Either it's been Beal or Garden, but they've been going inside the tackle guard gap, and they've had some success walling off Miami and getting uh, some good yardage on first down. There you get six yards. Seven for 39 yards for the fullbacks in the first half. Second and four Bearcats. Kenner on the sprint out. And tripped up by Dan Morgan. Chad Plummer tripped up by Dan Morgan, and that is a big loss. It'll cost the Bearcats about five yards, and they'll bring up third and long. Dan Morgan does it again on the option play. Cincinnati has not run this play well all, all day, and Dan Morgan's been the main reason why they haven't had success. It, they string out. Miami does a nice job on the outside. They string out the option. You see Dan Morgan get up from one block, makes the tackle from his knees, and does a great job of pursuing, and gets congratulated there by teammate and fellow linebacker Nate Webster. Third and a long eight as Kenner goes in at quarterback and Plummer into the slot. Out of the shotgun. Stepping up in the pocket, over the middle, intercepted by Edward Reed. Edward Reed to the 30. Edward Reed is dropped down by Brian Ewell at the 28-yard line. That is the first collegiate interception for Edward Reed, the freshman, the redshirt freshman, out of St. Rose, Louisiana. Reed made, a, made the headlines last week on the special teams. This time he steps in front of number four, Chad Plummer. Kenner, the quarterback for Cincinnati, tried to force the football to the playmaker, Plummer, down the middle of the field. He does a nice job of stepping up and buying himself some time. He probably should have tucked it under his shoulder and, and tried to get as many yards by running the football. But as you can see right there, a terrific break by Edward Reed. He knew the ball was coming to number four, Plummer, all the way, stepped in front for a hurricane turnover. Third turnover of the day created by the Miami defense. Reed caused one fumble and now has picked up an interception. Well, first down, Canes, ball just inside the Cincinnati 29-yard line. Scott Covington, the quarterback. Nick Williams and Edger and James, the running back. Standard set for Miami, counter play to James. And David Ware runs him down for a three-yard loss. Kevin Ward, rather, ran him down along with Eric Harper. Ward, the young man we mentioned out of Chantilly, Virginia. Guy who's really turned his life around, and he did not play well last week against Tulane, but is playing well today. Well, he turned around Edron James that time from the backside, number 77, Kevin Ward, all 297 pounds of him in the Miami backfield. Another tackle for loss. He had one last week. He gets another one today. He is a wide body on second and 13 for Miami, trying to take advantage of the turnover. Fake to James. Covington steps up. Plenty of time now has to run. Covington will run out of bounds about the 24-yard line, chased out by Bobby Fuller. But Scott picks up some yardage and will bring up a third and four. At the last second, Scott Covington thought better of it than giving his big wide receiver, Reggie Wayne, a chance for a, a, a jump ball down in the end zone. He was just going to throw it right here, and he says, you know what, I think I'm going to get as many yards as I can and give me a better situation on third down. He did a nice job of getting as many yards as he could, get out of bounds, and that brings up a Miami third and four on the 23-yard line. Gain was eight, Miami three of seven on third down conversions this afternoon. Stretch play, James trying to find room. It's gonna be run out of bounds, well short of the first down. Eric Harper, the safety, ran him out. No gain, perhaps even a loss of a yard. Hassan Champion helping out. And Miami will be forced to bring the field goal unit onto the field. Nice job by the Bearcat defense, really stringing that play out to the sideline. Miami offensively up front really couldn't get anybody out of the way. It looked like everybody was on skates, but a nice job by the Bearcat defense. You see right there, number 48, champion, the, the strong side linebacker, forcing Edron James out of bounds. There was a gain of a yard on the play. It is fourth down, and Miami's field goal unit is on the field. Jeff Popovich will hold. This will be a 41-yard attempt. Andy Crossland to kick it. Crossland, plenty of distance. And he knocks it through there. Andy Crossland with a 41-yard field goal. 12 minutes, 39 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And it's now Miami 24 and Cincinnati 6. We'll be right back on Sports Channel from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati after this. Sports Channel Florida has your ticket to all the excitement of college football. Tune in every Saturday at 10 a.m. for Saturday morning college kickoff, your pregame guide to the hottest college matchups. It's all right here on Sports Channel Florida. Butch Davis on the sideline talking to Edger and James, and the Hurricanes failed on a third and four. 
And John and I both uh, kind of like to see him go to the tight end a little more in that kind of situation. I'd like to see Bubba and Mondrell get in the game a little bit more, especially maybe not waiting till third down, but maybe even on second down with a combination round to the outside and let Scott pick and choose who he wants to deliver the football to. But they tried to go with Edrin on that stretch play, but they did end up cashing in on the turnover with a field goal. Robert Cooper and Don McKnight back to receive, and it'll be Andy Crossland for his first kickoff of the afternoon. Todd Sievers had been kicking off. Crossland bangs it high and deep. McKnight, six yards deep, bobbles it, and that'll be another touchback. So the Miami kickers, again, doing a nice job as Wilbur Valdez up at the 20-yard line getting into it with a couple of the Bearcats. Cincinnati starts first and 10 at their own 20. Big series, Frank, for Cincinnati. They came out on their opening series of the second half. Had a turnover on Kenner's throw to trying to get the ball to Plummer down the field. Looks like Plummer, Plummer will take the snap under center to start the second series of the second half for the Bearcats. Orlando Smith, number 20, in that running back. And the fullback will be Lloyd Garden, as Chad Plummer is the quarterback. Double wide receiver to the top of the screen. And the tight end also set on the left side of the formation. This is Smith. Picks up only a yard. Edward Reed in on the tackle for Miami. Coming up from the strong safety position. It'll bring up second and nine. A short nine for Cincinnati. They gave him progress just over the 21-yard line. Let's take a look at Orlando Smith's numbers. Four carries, 21 yards last week. That was his first carry today. This is Kenner now, the quarterback. Straight drop. Kenner over the middle, incomplete. Looked like somebody got a piece of that ball. Or it looked like he almost tried to pull it back, John. Well, he really should have because it was man coverage and he could have run forever. There was nobody on the left side of the, of the uh, Miami secondary. If he decided to run the football, Kenner thought about it, but he was already committed to the pass, trying to dump the ball off to Smith, Smith underneath. But he would have run for at least 30 yards before a Miami defender would have touched him. Third down and a long eight for the Bearcats. Nathan Wise into the game. He's in the backfield along with McCleskey. And Plummer in the slot as Kenner quarterbacks out of the option. Miami in the nickel package defensively. Pressure coming. There's the pass. Oh, dropped. Nick Ward had an interception. And he's going to kick himself all the way back home on the plane to Miami about that one. Yeah, that was thrown right in the middle of his jersey number three. He was trying to cradle that that uh, re interception. Another forced ball by Kenner, trying to get it to their playmaker, Plummer. But he was late on the delivery and plus a, a bad throw. There was really no way of getting the football into his receiver. Nick Ward drops a sure interception. So Adam Wolfeck will come on to kick it away for the Bearcats as they go three and out. Here on their second series of the third quarter, Leonard Myers back to receive at the Miami 35. Bit of a high snap. They got it. And Miami blocked it. Nate Brooks got it, but Wolfeck picks up the football, and Nick Ward is going to bring him down well short of the first down. Nate Brooks, he had a punt deflection last week, and he just flat out blocked that one. Nate's two for two in, in uh, two weeks of football here for the Canes special teams. Almost picked it right off of the foot of the Bearcat punter. Take a look at the top of the screen. He makes a nice move to the inside, and he's got clear sailing to the punter. They're looking around for the football. Could not find it, but uh, the Miami special team stops Wolfick, the punter, short of the first down. You see number three, Nick Ward on the tackle with Al Blades, number seven. Another big turnover by special teams for the Hurricanes. And you know what, John? We were watching in warm-ups the Cincinnati long snappers, and I said to you, He's a little slow getting the ball back there, a little too much air under the football, and Miami may have a shot at blocking one. That's exactly what set it up, Frank. A bad snap, a high snap, and then a great move on the outside by number two, Nate Brooks. Nate Brooks, the uh, senior out of North Miami, North Miami High School, the uh, star rapper as well. We That's right. Last week, got a couple of CDs already out. In high fashion dresser, uh, I've heard, too. Yes, he is. So Nate Brooks gets his hands on a second punt this season. There's a Cincinnati player down at the 22-yard line. Really hard to decipher a number. It looks like number 22, and that would be Dewan Gossett, the outside linebacker from right here in Cincinnati. Nate Brooks 
Reed scored a touchdown last week on an Edward Reed block punt, deflected a punt, and now has uh, blocked this one to put Miami in great field position. Here's an injury update, and this is one of the strangest ones I ever heard. Cincinnati assistant coach Greg Karpinski suffered a broken leg just before halftime when he was run over on the sideline by a player coming off the field during a play. Karpinski, who usually coaches from the press box, only on the sidelines for the final few seconds of the first half. So maybe they should have held the elevator for him. <laughs> That's true. He probably rushed down to get to the sidelines and give some information to the uh, the offense that time. I did see them carrying him out off the field. It looks like it was number 22, Gossett, the linebacker. That's a big loss for that Bearcat defense. I know, Frank, we've called his name a number more than once early in this afternoon. So the training staff of the Bearcats taking Gossett to the locker room for more attention. And Rick Minner's team finds themselves backed up against the wall once again. They trail at 24-6, 11-32 left to go in the third quarter. And Miami will have a first and 10 just inside the Cincinnati 24-yard line. So let's see what Miami comes up with offensively. It's been a nice day for Scott Covington so far. A couple of touchdown passes and really only one bad throw that I can remember that he overshot an open receiver. Now this is a tough game for Scott uh, Covington to really come in and feel like he's got it under control because you're going to face a lot of pressure. And to his credit, he's done a nice job of running this offense. You know, they, they were backed up a couple times on first down with penalties late in the second quarter, and they've overcome that. Now the special teams and defense gives them great field position for the second time in a row. And let's see if they can not only come out of here with a field goal, but a touchdown and put this game out of reach. Jim McConaughey marks the ball ready for play, and the Hurricanes will begin first and 10. Call it at the Cincinnati 23 officially. Coming out with man coverage right away, Frank. Edger and James fake to him. Covington on the rollout. Scott to the end zone. Santana Moss, touchdown. And Santana Moss was not his first choice as a receiver. Nice job by Scott Covington. Great patience and great determination by the backside. Santana Moss knew he had to get to be involved in the play. He had a bust across the middle of the football field. It was originally going to go to Reggie Wayne on a little in and out move outside, but a nice job by the Bearcat defense. You see Scott right there turning his head downfield, going to his second receiver and throws a strike on the run to Santana Moss for his second touchdown of the of the early afternoon. And you may have seen Don McKnight kind of pull up at the end of that play and he is down in the end zone. They're massaging his left calf as you look at Santana Moss. Four catches, 56 yards and a couple of touchdowns today. And I got to give our, our colleague Don Bailey Jr. from the Hurricane Radio Broadcast a lot of credit because he said Santana is going to have a breakout day today. It's going to be his first start. He, he suffered a crack in his jaw on a hit from Nick Ward during fall practice and missed the opening game last week. And Santana, you can phone home and That's call right. collect. That's when you got right. two touchdowns, you can call collect. Boy, he did a great job of staying involved. That's what you have to do. Stay involved in the pattern. Of, uh, even if you're not the number one receiver, he knew he had an opportunity to get there, and he got he got to the end zone and found the football. And they just carried Don McKnight to the locker room. So on back-to-back -back plays, you just see uh, the edge there of the training staff carrying him out. Back-to-back -back plays, the Cincinnati defense loses Gossett and McKnight. Andy Crossland in for the conversion. And Jeff Popovich will hold. Pat Del Vecchio, the snapper. I already told her that. Crossland up and it is good and with 11 minutes and 26 seconds left to go in the third quarter Miami with two quick scores to open the third it's the Hurricanes 30 31 Cincinnati 6 we'll be back right after this on Sports Channel Eleven twenty-six left to go in the third quarter. Miami now with 10 quick points to start the third quarter has stretched their lead to 31 to 6 over the Bearcats of Cincinnati. A look at Andy Crossland, the junior out of Dallas, Texas, set to kick it off. Cooper and Jason Collins Baker, number two, back to receive for the Bearcats. Crossland with a line drive, and that is going to go in and out of the end zone, and again a touchback. And the Bearcats will start first and ten at the 20. Well, the Hurricanes certainly have improved that aspect of their game. They had only two touchbacks and 61 kicks last year, and they've already far exceeded that in two ball games. Doing a nice job. That's the best way you can cover a kick is have your kicker put enough leg into it to get it into the end zone, and Miami's defense will, will really reap the benefits of that, always starting on the 20-yard line. It's Chad Plummer coming in at quarterback. Joined in the backfield by Orlando Smith, number 20, as a lone setback. Plummer in the triple wide out formation. A motion from Rob Coppola. 
Orlando Smith, and Orlando Smith is going to get a first down. It is Deontay Kenner at quarterback, I beg your pardon. Uh, the gift to Orlando Smith will result in a gain of 12. Marquise Fitzgerald with the tackle for Miami, but a nice gain on first down. And Cincinnati gets the sticks moving right away as they are down 31-6. Look at Orlando Smith out of Elmira, New York, and Deontay Kenner, the sophomore from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Numbers on Kenner, 9 out of 18, 145 yards. And right now, Plummer is not in the game as he usually is at wide receiver. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Again, it's Smith trying to move the pile. Picks up about three yards to the close to the 35-yard line. Michael Burrow, number 93, the junior college transfer in on the tackle, along with 59, Michael Smith. Nice play by Burrow and Smith coming from the backside. Good pursuit by the junior linebacker getting his first taste of action today from the right side of your screen. You'll see number 59. Michael Smith come like a blur along with Webster and Morgan, a host of Miami white jerseys in on the tackle. That's what Butch Davis and Bill Miller likes to see. A lot of pursuit to the football. Second and seven for the Bearcats. Smith alone running back. Again, the triple wide receiver formation. Coppola in motion. Kenner straight drop. Pump fakes. Now flips it out wide, incomplete. Intended for Orlando Smith, who was open and says, Ew. Why couldn't yeah, he hit me? That could have been a nice play for the Bearcat offense. Smith all alone in the flat. It looked like Deontay Kenner wanted to get the football up the field to his tight end, but thought better of it because the linebacker was dropping right in his sights. Just needs to take his time, set his feet, and deliver the football. He tried to make a, a, a tough throw out of really what should have been an easy throw. All he needs to do is set his feet, make the throw. You know you're going to take the hit, but it, it's worth a first down. Miami comes in with their dime defensive package. Four of ten third down conversions for the Bearcats as they face a third and seven. And Kenner out of the shotgun. Kenner moving out of the pocket. He's going to run this one. And he is going to be close to a first down. Depends on the spot. And he'll get it up at the 44-yard line. Well, Kenner picked up nine. He needed seven. And the Bearcats will move the sticks. Kenner using his athletic ability this time to run the football. Waited till the last minute trying to push the ball down the field. Deciding what he wanted to do. Picks up a nice block on the outside by McCleskey, the, the freshman running back. And then gets up the field enough past the first down marker for a Bearcat first down and they move the chains and keep the drive going. 9.55 to go third quarter. Miami leading 31-6. Triple wide receiver now to the top of the screen, including Chad Plummer. Miami doesn't have enough guys out there to cover. Now they shift the formation. Wide receiver screen to Plummer. Plummer with a blocker in front. Delvin Brown made the tackle, but Plummer will pick up eight. So it's just a little hitch and a wide receiver screen, and they get the other two wide receivers blocking out in front of Plummer. Sometimes the simpler the play, the better the execution. Just a hit screen outside to number four. You see Chad Plummer takes a step and then goes to the outside. Picked up a nice block on the outside by Coppola, the wide receiver, number 23, and also number two down the field, Collins Baker, delivering a nice block, bringing up a second and two. Deontay Kenner, 10 out of 20, 153 yards. Orlando Smith, the lone running back. Plummer in motion. Orlando Smith gets down to the Miami 45, has a first down. Nate Webster makes the tackle for the Hurricanes. Gain of three, but it was enough to pick up a first. Craig, this is really how Cincinnati wanted to come out and start the second half of this ball game. They really didn't think they'd turn the ball over twice. Miami scoring 10 points on those turnovers. But this is more or less what Cincinnati wanted to do coming out of the locker room. Establish the run, mix in uh, some easy three-step passing plays, some hitch plays to the outside, get the ball to Plummer, and move the football against Miami. First and 10 from the Miami 45. Kenner remains the quarterback. Fake to Orlando Smith. Plummer open over the middle, makes the catch, and gets down to the Miami 31-yard line. Edward Reed on the tackle with help from Nate Webster. But that is a pickup of almost 15 and another Bearcat first down. And Plummer taking a big hit by number 20, Ed Reed, the strong safety, but a nice ball by Deontay Kenner, the quarterback. And it looks like Chad Plummer needs a blow. We're looking for somebody to take his spot out on the field. Nice concentration over the middle, but he paid the price. Ed Reed, the sophomore strong safety, came up and delivered a pop. Eight and a half minutes to go. Plummer, seven catches, 138 yards. 8.23 to go, clock moving in the third quarter. Miami leads it 
Now out of the I formation. That's the fullback Beal, and this time he has stood up right at the line of scrimmage by Nate Webster. Big defensive stop by Nate Webster, the middle linebacker for the Canes. Boy, he stood his ground that time in the middle of that Hurricane defense. Right here, steps to the line of scrimmage, gets low and just drives his legs. Nice job. Great pursuit and toughness by your middle linebacker for the Hurricanes, number 52, Nate Webster. Give a yard gain on the play officially. It'll bring up a second and nine. Kenner, the quarterback, Coppola in motion. Kenner under some pressure, fires to Coppola at the 28. Coppola gets away from one and gets inside the Miami 25-yard line. He's about two yards shy of a first down. Edward Reed on the tackle for Miami along with Dan Morgan. Kenner showing great patience in the pocket. Knew he was going to get hit, but found a way to get the ball to Coppola on the outside. Pressure by Michael Lawson up front. He goes inside, picks up a nice block. Could have been a push in the back against Nate Webster. Wasn't called, but Coppola goes up close to the first down marker, bringing up a third and two for the Bearcats. And Coppola is the man who is down and being helped up at the moment on the sideline. In the meantime, it is a third and two from just inside the Miami 24. Orlando Smith with the football over top of the pile and has what looks to be a first down inside the Miami 21. Nate Webster with the tackle, but Orlando Smith just went airborne, some big hops. So, some big hops over the middle, needed a long two, and he got it in the air. Take a look right here. He's airborne at the line of scrimmage. Nobody hits him, and he goes over the top for the Bearcat first down. Six minutes, 45 seconds to go in the third quarter as we take another look. He was determined to get this first down, Frank. Another bit arm tackles to meet him. He runs through the arm tackle of Nate Webster for the first down. First and 10 Bearcats just outside the Miami 20. Kenner is dropped. Nate Webster flashing through and making the play for the Miami Hurricane defense. Not sure if Kenner missed the handoff. It didn't look like he wanted to run the option that time. It looked like he missed the handoff to his fullback up the middle. Tried to get as much as he could, but let's take a look and see. I think that ball was supposed to go to the fullback, and he just ended up missing the handoff. Did the wise thing, keeping the ball and trying to go north and south, and he looked like he got a yard on the play. We'll still call it second and 10. We move the football, maybe the length of the football. 5.56 to go, third quarter. Bearcats with three wide outs in the formation and no tight end. And flags fly and the play stopped. Looked like Kenner, number, uh, actually Chad Plummer in the slot that time called timeout for the offense. If that is the case, that would be Cincinnati's first time out in the second half. They used their allotment of three up in the first half very quickly. Had none left at the end of the first half, and it kind of cost them. So there is a break in the action. It's 5.48 left to go third quarter. Miami leading 31 to 6. John, uh, the Hurricane defense been on the field a long time on this drive. We'll see if they can stiffen up as they did in the first half and hold Cincinnati to a couple of field goals. But I want to talk about Chad Plummer a little bit, their slash player. I mean, he is an impressive athlete. He's 6'3", about 220. We saw him up close during warm-ups, and he's an impressive-looking guy. He's a big fella out there, and he does a nice job at both quarterback and at receiver. But he's been taking a pounding today going over. He's been asked to run a lot of patterns over the middle, right where the zone defense is really coming to the football, and he's taking some hits from Edward Reed. He's taking some big hits from Delvin Brown and some of the linebackers, Morgan, Webster, and Smith. So, uh, you know, he has to be a tough individual, and he has to be in shape, Frank, because he's running all over the, the uh, field for the offense today for the Bearcats. Plummer 0 for 2 in the passing department, but has seven catches for 140 yards. He 6'3", 220 senior out of Tallahassee Godby High School, which always produces some good Division I players. Miami with a 31-6 lead. We have 5.48 left to go third quarter here at Nippert Stadium on the University of Cincinnati campus. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel as Deontay Kenner brings the Bearcats up to the line. Triple wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. They ran that hit screen last time they were in this formation. Maybe look for a pump and go here. Again, it is the hit screen and incomplete as the ball was underthrown to Plummer. That time Miami sort of anticipated that they had a lot more guys in the area. Yeah, that play looked like it was going to be a failure from the get-go. I was almost thinking they were going to pump that, maybe take a shot at the end zone, but it'll bring up a third and ten. Just a bad throw right from the start. 
Nice job by the tackle getting the hands down of Burrow the end, but just never had a chance of, of completing the pass on the outside. The ball was delivered low. Third and 10. Bearcats have to reach just inside the Miami 11 yard line for a first down. Double wide outs to the bottom of the screen. Nobody nobody's up covering top. the wide receiver up top. And now a timeout is called. But it's multiple offensive package causing the young Hurricane defense a little bit of confusion. Let's remember that Miami in the secondary starts two freshmen and two sophomores. Yeah, they're very young on, on defense, really on offense as well, but they've done a nice job today. After the first half, or uh, the first quarter, Cincinnati throwing the football over the middle. They've done a nice job in that secondary, and that was a wise timeout. They were out of position, burn a timeout, no, no harm, no foul. Yeah, you look at Miami's defense, and among the defensive backs, you're looking at the starters, sophomore, sophomore, freshman, freshman. The backups are junior, sophomore, junior, senior. So only one senior among the first eight in the defensive backfield for Miami. And so maybe that's part of the reason that they're confusing. Cincinnati comes out, they, they show trips to one side. They show a lot of three wide receiver formation. And Miami, when they're in the base defense, they've got to adjust to that. Yeah, and they, they brought in a nickel on occasion. Actually, number 33 has done that. Jeff Popovich and Edward Reed come down and play the safeties to either side. But Miami's done a, a nice job really combating the, the multiple offensive sets that Cincinnati throws at you. They've defensed the option well on the perimeter. They've done a nice job containing Plummer. Plummer took off on one reception, and what did they do? Edward Reed comes up with a big hit, and they cause a turnover. So they've done a nice job really containing the weapons that Cincinnati has. Let's take a look at the third down conversion. Cincinnati doing a pretty good job. They were only 33% last week, so they're up to 50. Miami 3 of 8. Defensive backs for the Hurricanes now. Nick Ward in at the corner, replacing Marquise Fitzgerald. Well, I beg your pardon. Fitzgerald's out there in the dime package right now along with Popovich. Leonard Myers and Nick Ward are the corners, Delvin Brown and Edward Reed the safety. So Miami in their dime package with only Dan Morgan, uh, the sole linebacker in this particular set. Well, let's say the Miami offense will be well rested when they get a chance to come back on the football field because Cincinnati is really taking this ball almost the length of the field. Five minutes and 25 seconds to be exact. And they've done a nice job moving the change, but this is the biggest play probably of the series, third and 10. 5.46 left to go third quarter. It's Miami 31, Cincinnati 6. Bearcats will go with the triple wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Robert Cooper, the lone running back on a third and close to 10. Kenner straight drop. Pressure coming from Stinson and he forces the incompletion. Brian Stinson with the quarterback hurry and it'll bring up fourth and long. Looked like Chad Plummer wanted the football earlier and he should have delivered it earlier because Stinson was coming from the right side. Brian Stinson, the sophomore, does a nice job on the outside. Swim move to the inside, beats the tackle to the pop. Brian Yule and does a nice job coming to the inside and delivering a pop from the backside. Look at that. Good job. Good pressure. You see number 98 as well. Matt Sweeney in the backfield. So the defensive front doing a good job putting pressure on the Bearcat quarterback. And official signal of stoppage with 541 left to go in the third quarter. As Cincinnati lines up for the field goal, Joe Judge, two out of three in the first half. He will hold out of, will kick out of Deontay Kenner's hold. And remember that Kenner is a quarterback. Ball will be spotted about the 27-yard line, making it a 37-yard attempt. Judge got it partially deflected. It's going to be no good. I'm not sure if it was Edward Reed or Leonard Myers. Reed celebrating the most, but the Hurricanes get their hands on another kick. Special teams. Butch Davis emphasized special teams. He demanded an improvement over the summer, and he's gotten it in the first two games. A lot of blocked and deflected kicks so far. Let's see if we can take a look and... Not sure who got a hand on it. Might have been somebody coming up the middle. Might have been number 20, Edward Reed. Not sure who got a, a piece of it, but someone uh, from pressure up the middle did a great job in forcing that, uh, that partially blocked kick on, on the field goal attempt. So the Bearcats get nothing out of a five minute and 25 second drive. And Miami takes over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. This is Najee Davenport, his first action of the game. He'll pick up four yards before he is dropped down by number 92, Percy Evans, senior out of Boston. Well, the Miami special teams raising their head and really making an impact on this game today. We'll take another look. It could have been Leonard Myers right there in the middle, number 22, flying in from the outside. 
although possibly there was pressure coming up the middle. Real hard to tell from that angle whether Leonard got a piece of it. I'm sure Butch, no matter who it was, is very happy that it was deflected, showing a lot of uh, aggressive play on special teams. Second and six for Miami. Davenport again, this time nowhere to run. No gain. Kawesi Daniels, the middle linebacker, along with number 48, Hassan Champion, making the play. It'll bring up third and about seven for Miami. As I said, Miami's offense was well rested. Well, so was Cincinnati's defense, and they've made two nice plays on first and second down, holding Nigel Davenport, who ran wild in his first, uh, last week in his first collegiate performance, did a nice job now finding a little tough running room against a Bearcat defense. Third and seven for Miami. Four-man rush. Nick Williams with the catch, and he'll be pushed out short of a first down. Number 48, Hassan Champion, made the play. Now Williams comes up about three yards shy of a first down, and the Hurricanes will have to kick it away. So the Cincinnati defense holds after Miami's defense blocks the field goal attempt. Yeah, three plays and out by the Bearcat defense. Haven't seen that a lot today, but they do a good job stuffing Miami there. Miami only three of nine on third down conversions. Crossland to kick. Bonner, the deep receiver for the Bearcats. Flag down. Good kick by Crossland. Fair catch signaled and made at the 22-yard line of Cincinnati, but we'll check out the flag. Sitting back at the Miami 28-yard line, James McConaughey, our referee, will discuss it. A 51-yard kick by Crossland with no return if it stands. The discussion ongoing. Ball start against Miami procedure, and they will certainly make the Hurricanes kick it again. Yeah, that'll negate a, a terrific boot by Andy Crossland that time, 51 yards. Butch Davis not happy about that. His special teams have been aggressive, but that's something that they can get away from penalties on special teams, especially procedure. Well, certainly last week against East Tennessee State. On the kicking team, five men in the backfield, five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, repeat the down. Certainly last week it didn't hurt them, and so far today it hasn't hurt them. But against a Virginia Tech or UCLA, these kind of things will kill you. Penalty numbers, Miami 6 for 56 yards, Cincinnati 4 for 17. And Crossland again in punt formation. And this time Bonner standing at the Bearcat 40-yard line. Good protection, Crossland again hangs it high. And again a fair catch signaled by Champion. And he makes it at the 32-yard line. So the Bearcats picked up about 10 yards because of the penalty in field position. There's four minutes and four seconds left to go third quarter, a 45-yard punt by Andy Crossland, and the Bearcats will start first and 10 from just past their 32-yard line. Look for the Bearcats to come out with uh, multiple receiver sets now. There's only 404 left to go in the third quarter. They need to push the ball down the football field, and they cannot settle for field goals. They need to get touchdowns to get back into this game. Miami right now holding a 31-6 lead. Frank Forch, John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel, bringing you Hurricane football on the road in Cincinnati. From the Bearcat 32-yard line. Plummer with time. And pass is complete to Chris Archie up at the 45-yard line. That is a gain of 13. And a Bearcat first down. Nate Brooks had the coverage. This time, Chad Plummer on the other end of the pass and catch. He's throwing it outside. As you said, a nice curl route on the outside. Good job pushing the receiver downfield. And I really like Chad Plummer. Boy, what a terrific athlete. He can run routes. He can, he can throw the football at the quarterback position. Does it, every, does it all. Chris Archie making a nice catch going down to get the football. First completion for Plummer. He's one out of three. He has caught seven passes. On first and ten. That's the fullback Garden trying to move the pile and picks up a couple of yards. Dan Morgan got a piece of the tackle. And getting off the bottom of the pile, Brian Stinson, number 95. A sophomore out of Deland, Florida. 324, clock moving here in the third quarter. We'll bring up a second and eight for Cincinnati from their 47-yard line. Now Kenner is the quarterback. You see the time of possession. Cincinnati has kept the ball pretty well, but they haven't been able to capitalize on that possession. It's the give to Nathan Wise, and he's going to pick up about two more. Number 97, Michael Lawson, had him around the ankles. 
and held it to a two-yard gain. Nice play by the senior from Delray Beach. Nice play, nice strong play by the tackle. Michael Lawson doing a good job holding his ground, coming in and making a big tackle. Cincinnati really making the mistake of running to Miami's strength. They should have run this play up top. That's where the most room to run the football would have been, but they run into the strength, and Michael Lawson hanging on from behind. He gets some help from the secondary with Jeff, Jeff Popovich also, but a nice job up front. Nice strong play by Lawson. Ninth different ball carrier today for Cincinnati. And now the Hurricanes again confused defensively. There's five wide receivers in the formation. And a penalty flag comes down. And blow the play dead. That time Cincinnati showed five wide outs and the Hurricanes just didn't have enough defensive backs on the field. They were still in their base defense. Yeah, Miami not spreading Get out. Ball. Delay of the game on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. So a break for Miami. For some reason, on a third and six, they were still in their base defense. And Cincinnati came out with five wide receivers. And now the Hurricanes will bring on three extra DBs. Fitzgerald, Brown, and uh, Leonard Myers coming back on. Well, Miami's yeah. got too many. Got, no, they got three off now. Here comes trips again, Frank. They're going to try to spread the football field and, and deliver it to their home run guy, Chad Plummer. Three wide receivers. And again, Miami doesn't have enough defensive backs out there. Here's Kenner. Pass is tipped out of the hands of the receiver, Jason Collins Baker, and falls incomplete. He would have had enough for a first down. Kenner throwing the ball a little high, but you got to make a play. And Collins Baker went up. He timed his jump perfectly, but just could not hang on. See, John, I don't think Miami's got him. They have two defensive backs out on that side and the safety in the middle of the field against a triple wide receiver. That's just not enough people out there. Well, they were playing a soft zone, trying to make them throw underneath, and they did a good job of forcing the football on the curl. But as you said, Frank, it didn't look like there was enough people to the strong side of the field to defend the three wide receivers. So Adam Wolfeck on to punt, and Leonard Meyer stands back at his 10. Wolfeck hangs it high. Meyer says, let's get out of the way. Get out of the way, and that's going to take a Miami bounce and will be down at the 34-yard line, down by the snapper, David Bertucci. So the Canes will start first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Miami leading at 31-6, 148 left to go in the third quarter. Hurricanes will take possession, first and 10. And Scott Covington remains the quarterback. Najee Davenport is the tailback. And looks like Will McPartland seeing his first action today at fullback. Davenport behind a good block from McPartland. And Davenport still going. He is gone. Now Jay Davenport is going to house it from 65 yards away. 66 yards for Najee Davenport and his third touchdown of this young season. That's the strength that you have in this backfield. It doesn't matter if you go one, two, or three deep in the Canes backfield. You're going to get production. That time, Najee Davenport, the freshman, he had two touchdowns last week. He comes up with a big 66-yard touchdown here against the Bearcats, breaking tackles about 10 yards down the field. Just a stretch play, a search play off the right side. Nice blocking by the tight end, Daniel Franks, and lead blocking also by number 73, Joaquin Gonzalez. You see Najee Davenport raising his high knees through the arm tackles of the Bearcat defenders. He goes down the sidelines for the Hurricane touchdown. Andy Crossland on to convert out of the Popovich hold. Crossland's kick is up, and it is good. And with a minute 36 left to go in the third quarter, it's now Miami 38 and Cincinnati 6. I'll tell you one thing about Najee Davenport. If you don't get a shoulder pad into him and wrap him up, you are not going to bring him down. And that's that goes for all three of these Miami running backs, especially Najee and Edron James. They've got the strength. James Jackson has the breakaway speed, but you saw Najee in the open field. He's got some burners, too. Today's attendance, 20,681. 20 people less than came last week to see Tulane. And most of the people are uh, heading for the exits after that. There's not 20,000 in this stadium right now. I can tell you that. Now Jay Davenport, three carries, 69 yards, and that 66-yard touchdown run. Well, it's the Jays. It's EJ, JJ, and Najee. That's right. Miami tailbacks. Can you say, that reminds me of the old, you can call me Ray. <laughs> That's you right. can call me Ray J. But don't, don't, don't call me Johnson. <laughs> don't call me Johnson. And you can't call these guys anything because they've done a terrific job running the football. I tell you what, give credit to the offensive line and the tight ends. The tight ends, they don't get a lot of credit for catching the football, but they're doing a terrific job of sealing the outside and, and moving the football. So credit the offensive line as well as the tight ends. And downfield, the receivers doing a nice job staying on their blocks as well. Jason Collins Baker, Robert Cooper back to receive for the Bearcats. By the way, that Miami scoring drive, pretty simple to figure out. One play, 66 yards and 12 seconds. 
Here's the kickoff from Todd Sievers. Another good kick. Cooper, four yards deep. He's going to down it for the touchback. So again, Todd Sievers and Andy Crossland doing a great job on kickoffs for the Hurricanes. It looks like Andy Crossland, since he came here to the University of Miami, has really increased his leg strength. He's done a nice job in the opening two ball games, getting the football, not only punting, but kicking off. And then you have Sievers, the young freshman, coming in, doing a nice job, really getting the ball in the end zone just about every time he's kicked the ball off for the Hurricane special teams. Well, the Bearcats, first and 10 from their 20, with a minute 30 left to go in the third quarter. It is Chad Plummer at quarterback. Excuse me, Deontay Kenner, and Plummer is in the slot to the top of the screen. Nathan Wise, the lone running back. And penalties, and there was a procedure as uh, Michael, Law, rather Damian Lewis, took a shot at Nathan Wise, and he's going to get a penalty for that. Yeah, he's going to get an unnecessary roughness penalty, but there was movement up front first by Vince Bird, the left tackle for the Bearcat offensive line. So I think it's going to result in a 10-yard gain for Cincinnati. Right. If, I, if I read this correctly, they'll march off the 5 against Cincinnati and the 15 against Miami, and that'll give Cincinnati a first down at the 30. Here's the call from James McConaughey. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. And I have a feeling he's not finished. Dead ball, unnecessary roughness on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. This is the second penalty, and uh, Nathan Wise, and yeah, Damian just definitely should have pulled up. Yeah, that, yeah, that's something that's controllable, and I'm sure that Butch Davis will, will, you know, tell Damian about that because you can't have penalties like that, especially in a tight ball game. They found that out as the game went on against East Tennessee, and they're doing the same thing today. You know, it's aggressive, and they, he likes that, but you just got to pull away and use common sense sometimes. That's Plummer in motion. Kenner, the quarterback. Kenner looking for Plummer. Fires instead to his tight end and nearly intercepted by Al Blades. Al Blades nearly had his first collegiate pick. Credit great coverage by Nate Webster on the tight end. Number 88, Josh Anderson, just going in an option route, it looked like. The tight end on the inside and the playmaker plumber to the outside. Kenner tries to force the football in, but you see no room to fit the football in. Great coverage by Nate Webster and then Al Blades coming back, coming up from the secondary, almost making a terrific interception. Second and 10, and the Bearcats go with the triple wide receiver to the top of the screen. And again, the Hurricanes look a little bit confused as to their coverage. Again, that wide receiver screen to Plummer. And Chris Campbell runs him out of bounds after a pickup of about five and a half yards. It'll bring up third and four for the Bearcats. Chuck Wigano, the secondary coach, trying to relay to his troops outside how he wants to defend that that quick screen, you see Chad Plummer's number is a career high, 146 yards today on eight receptions, and I believe he'll tack on a few more yards with a uh, about a quarter and a minute and 18 left to go in the third quarter. They're going to try to get the ball to him because he's the, he's the guy that can make a, a small play into a touchdown. Third and four from the 36. Again, triple wide out to the bottom of the screen. Kenner, with time, finds Plummer. Plummer at the 35, goes around Campbell and gets across the 40 and should have first down yardage. Nate Brooks and Michael Smith on the tackle for the Hurricane defense. The thing I like about Plummer is he sets up all the defenders coming at, you know, 100 miles an hour at him. He's under control, and it's a nice job by Kenner. He's trying to push the ball down the field. He looks, he looks, he said, you know what, I'm going to take the sure thing, get it out to my playmaker. Now watch this, he knows people are coming from the inside, but they over-pursue. You get a young linebacker in Chris Campbell, he's running 100 miles an hour, not trying to force him out of bounds, and Plummer knows that, sets him up, cuts inside for a first down. First and 10 at the 41, again, triple wide receiver, top of the screen. This time it's Wise with the football. Wise across the 45, gets out close to the 47-yard line. Number 92, Damian Lewis making the tackle for the Miami defense. Gain of five. It's second and five. Bearcats with 41 seconds left to go in the third quarter. By the way, Miami with 104 points in consecutive games. That ties a school record. Back in 1989, they beat Cincinnati 56-0 and followed that with a 48-16 win over San Jose State. Last week, 66. Today, 38. Second and five, Bearcats. That's the fullback, Garden, with a hole. 
And Garden's still going. Al Blade's trying to strip the football, but Lloyd Garden has a first down at the Miami 44-yard line as he picked up 10. Chris Campbell and Al Blade's on the tackle. Big block that time by Vince Bird, the left tackle, doing a nice job coming from the inside out, providing some room for that Bearcat running attack. Ten seconds left to go third quarter. The clock moving, and it does not appear that we will get off another play before the end of the third quarter, and indeed the Bearcats will just wait for the quarter to run out. We have reached the end of three periods here at Nippert Stadium on the University of Cincinnati campus. It's Miami 38, Cincinnati 6. We'll be back with fourth quarter action here on Sports Channel right after this. Strike, strike up the band here at Cincinnati, although they don't have a whole lot to celebrate right now with the Hurricanes leading 38-6 as we begin the fourth quarter. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati here on Sports Channel. The Hurricanes with a 38-6 lead as we begin the fourth period of play. Cincinnati has it first and 10 at the Miami 44-yard line. Deontay Kenner remains the quarterback. Nathan Wise is the tailback. And Lloyd Garden, the fullback. Bobbled snap. Wise hit hard and dropped. Beautiful tackle by Jeff Popovich on Nathan Wise. Two guys from Sabino High School in Tucson, Arizona. And Jeff saying, how do you do, old buddy? <laughs> you got it. You called it earlier. Jeff Popovich really looks like he's swelled up for this season. He really looks buffed up. And on the fake field goal, he showed some power. Now he comes up on defense and puts a hit on the running back. You see there, Nathan Wise really going nowhere, losing a yard. Second and 11. Good play by Jeff Popovich. The junior safety from Tucson, Arizona. Former walk-on. Kenner, quick screen to Plummer. Plummer's got some room. Look out for Chad Plummer. Runs into his own man, still going, and finally pulled down at the 30-yard line. That's a first down after a pickup of 13 yards. Nate Brooks making the tackle for the Hurricanes along with Chris Campbell. Here's your numbers through three quarters. Miami's done a nice job rushing. You see 190 yards doing a great job also throwing the football. They've gotten two sacks. Uh, third down conversion is only three for nine, but they haven't been in that situation enough to hurt them. But they've done a nice job balancing out the run and pass. And I thought Scott Cummington in the running attack has done a great job. Plummer takes a break. What those numbers don't show is the special teams by Miami, the block punt, the block field goal. On first and 10 from the 30. That's the fullback Garden. He'll pick up about three, a whole host of Hurricanes there, led by Derek Ham, number 71. And that'll bring up a second and seven. 13.43 left to go in this football game. And a Cincinnati player slow to get up. It's Josh Anderson, the tight end, now makes it to his feet. Frank, I think this is an important quarter for the Miami defense just because of what happened last season in the fourth quarter. They really didn't play or perform well, and even though this game is kind of out of reach with the score, I think it's important for the defense to play well late into this football game. Second and seven, Cincinnati. That's the fullback Garden again, and Dan Morgan wraps him up after a gain of two. Dan got the first hit, and then the Cavalry arrived. Nate Webster also in there. And that's a good sign. That's happened all, all afternoon. Dan Morgan or Nate Webster, they make the initial hit. And then you see a lot of white jerseys attacking the football. You see Michael Lawson. You see Michael Barreau making his first start, doing a terrific job. Michael Smith back into the lineup today to get his first start. So a lot of fresh faces around the football. And uh, that's encouraging for this young Miami defense. Third and five for the Bearcats. Plummer in the slot to the bottom part of your screen. Out of the shotgun, Kenner. On the draw, and McCleskey Fumble. lost the football. He, oh, boy. I don't think he was down, but the whistle had blown. I think that was a quick whistle, but he was short of the first down. Just took a pop from Dan Morgan and Chris Campbell. There's a lot of white helmets running around, and Ham did a great job. Derek Ham did a nice job coming around and, and smelled out the uh, draw play. Let's take a look if we can hear at the end of this play when the whistle did blow. I don't know, Frank. Right, that's a fumble to me. That's a fumble to me, too. It's nice, aggressive defense by this Hurricane team, but the Bearcats will go for it on fourth and four from uh, the 23-yard line. On fourth down, Kenner, the quarterback. He's going to throw for it. 
going for the end zone. Wide open is number three, Bonner, but the pass falls incomplete. Jeff Popovich had the coverage, but Miami will take over at their own 23-yard line. Kenner had what he wanted. He had Cornelius Bonner on the corner route, wide open. He had a couple steps on number 33, Jeff Popovich, couldn't make the pass play, and they'll turn it over on downs to the Miami offense. So the Miami defense with the second unit defensive uh, backfield in there stands firm on a fourth down. There is a timeout being called on the field, and when, he, when we return to action, Kenny Kelly will be the Miami quarterback, and the officials just stopping play momentarily as they reset the uh, yardage chains at the Miami 24. We'll take a break. It's Miami 38, Cincinnati 6, 12.09 left to go from Cincinnati. Back at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Hurricanes take over first and 10 at the 24-yard line. Kenny Kelly is the new Hurricane quarterback. Najee Davenport with the football will squeeze out about three to the 27-yard line. Kevin Ward, number 77, again in on the tackle. Along with number 92, Percy Evans. Davenport picks up three, and it appears that Scott Covington's day is done as the Miami quarterback. Numbers on Covington, 12 out of 19, 161 yards, and three touchdowns. Scott was very efficient with the football, didn't get into a, a guessing game against this pressure defense, and took him out with big plays early. Second and seven. Kelly fakes to Davenport, to Daryl Jones at the 30. Daryl Jones trying to put a move on, tripped up by LeVar Glover as he got out to the 33-yard line. He's about a yard shy of a first down. They'll bring up third and one for the Canes. Nice move on the outside and a nice play to get Kenny Kelly's feet underneath him. A little hitch pass on the outside to Daryl Jones. You watch Kenny Kelly, he'll come out, fake the toss, step and deliver the pass outside to Jones. Jones makes a little jitterbug move to the outside, freezes the defender, almost gets around to the outside, just coming up a yard short of the first down. Miami three of nine on third down conversions today. Davenport and McPartland, the running backs. Davenport with the football, has a first oh, down, look out. Najee Davenport bursting across midfield and dragged down by Bobby Fuller as he reaches the Cincinnati 45-yard line. Najee Davenport is so strong and elusive, he can get through a, the smallest of holes. That time he saw it, he went north and south, did a great job of finding the hole. Look at the cutback right there, the stalemate on the line of scrimmage. A nice job by number 66, Brett Romberg, walling off the inside, and then you get number four taking it up the middle, Najee Davenport. Take a look at the offensive lineman just moving the line left. Just nothing but a crease to the outside. Nice downfield blocking also by the receivers. And then it's Najee Davenport for a big game. 18 yards, Najee five carries, 98 yards and a touchdown. Kelly will throw it on first down. Looking for a double covered module Fulcher and batted away by Hassan Champion. And Kenny probably should have gone somewhere else with that football because uh, Fulcher was locked up pretty well. Yeah, nice coverage that time by the Bearcat defense you mentioned. Hassan Champion, number 48, he's gotten great depth in pass coverage all afternoon. He made it tough for Scott Covington on a couple throws. That time he makes it tough for the freshman, Kevin Kelly. Second and 10, look at Kenny Kelly, the freshman, redshirt freshman out of Tampa, Florida. Miami expects big things, big things out of this quarterback. Last week he was three for three for 56 yards and a touchdown. He'll get his time. He's doing a good job coming in and reading defense. That time trying to force it down the field though. Second and 10 from the 45. Blitz coming. Kelly trying to run away from it. Finds his wide open Najee Davenport. Najee to the 35. Hurdles at the 30. And crashed down by Kevin Ward, but not until Najee Davenport reached the Cincinnati 23-yard line. Nice spin move by Kenny Kelly. He set up the defender. He knew he had an open re uh, defender coming from the top of his screen. He sees him right here. He goes, well, I'll just let you come, and I'll slip right, let you slip right by me. I know I've got Najee out in the flat. Takes a big hit as well from number 41, Rob Lucas, the linebacker, but nice presence by Kenny Kelly. He knows where his receivers, where his outlet was to the outside, and then Najee does a nice job taking it upfield for the Hurricanes. That's the athleticism that Kenny Kelly brings to an offense. On first and 10 for the Hurricanes. That's McPartland, the fullback, and Will stuck into the hole by Rob Lucas, number 41, along with Hassan Champion, a pickup of three. Wow, when Will looks at that play tomorrow on the films, he's going to know he had a cutback. It looked like he might have got a crease down to the 10 or 5-yard line, but he just missed it. He cut to the right. The hole was just a little bit left of where he's running right there. Will sees it. Got a nice job again by Brett Romberg, the left guard. And this offensive line now getting into the second unit offensive line. Wilbur Valdez, number 34, now in at fullback, giving McPartland a breather. 
Second and seven at the Bearcat 20. And Kenny pulled out a little too early. Kenny Kelly with a little bit of a mistake. That'll cost the Hurricanes five, and it'll bring up second and 12. But this playing experience that Kenny gets, because let's face it, he's going to be the man next year. That's right. That ball, full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. We peek the down. Kenny Kelly really saw the coverage. Looked like a pass play. Looked like Brett Romberg was stepping inside. Kenny maybe was going to see some play action or even a roll to the right side. Maybe uh, anticipated what he wanted to do with the football. But you're right, Frank. This is the future for the University of Miami. This is valuable experience and time that Kenny Kelly is going to get in, in this season when he comes into the football game. Eight penalties, 77 yards against Miami. Second and 12 after the penalty. Davenport. A small hole will get about four yards. Number 91, Dave Paul Stevens making the tackle for the Cincinnati defense, helped out by Hassan Champion, number 48. We'll bring up a third and eight for the Hurricanes. Uh, Kenny Kelly got about a quarter and a half last week. He's getting a full quarter here today. So building up that experience, you know, Scott Covington, we mentioned it often, threw over 200 passes as a backup in his first four years at Miami. Miami four of 10 on third down conversions in this game. Look for him to go one on one outside down here to the near side with number one, Daryl Jones. Good blitz pickup. Daryl Jones open catches it at the 15, shoved out of bounds by Don McKnight, who was back in after he was taking the locker room in the third quarter. That's about two yards shy of a first down, and the field goal unit will come onto the field. Good to see Don McKnight back. He uh, had a good first half for the Bearcat secondary, but just too much Miami offense, too much skill at the, at the skill positions and big plays on this Miami offense as well as special teams. Well, Jeff Popovich will come in to hold for Andy Crossland. Ball will be spotted at the 23, making it a 33-yard attempt. Pat Del Vecchio, the snapper. A little bit of a high snap. Popovich gets it down. Crossland's kick is no good. Missed it wide right. Well, Cincinnati will take over at their 23-yard line. Bit of a high snap there. Popovich got it down, but Andy just pulled it a little bit. And that is his first field goal miss of the year. Yeah, might have threw off his rhythm a little bit, but a nice job again by 33 Popovich. 7.43 left to go in the fourth quarter at Cincinnati. It's the Hurricanes 38, Cincinnati 6, right back on Sports Channel after this. Well, family day here at Nippert Stadium, taking in the football game between the Bearcats and the Miami Hurricanes. Tell you what, the Hurricane, yeah. the Hurricane football team isn't a lot older than that. <laughs> that's those right. Kids. First and 10 from the 20. Deontay Kenner, that's quarterback. Give to the fullback, Garden, and he is met by Webster, and Morgan did get away, and then was tripped up by Javon Rhodes, and he'll squeeze a yard out of it. So the Hurricane defense getting Javon Rhodes in there, and again, we'll mention Quincy Hips, the starting tackle from Tampa, missing today's game, had an irregular heartbeat yesterday, so they held him out as a precautionary measure. Garden did a good job to get away from Webster and Morgan and turned a two-yard loss into a gain of almost two. It's almost a dirty word when you don't mention Webster and Morgan in the same breath. It seems like they've played well together the last two weeks, really the first time they've got the experience of playing next to each other, and they're doing a terrific job. And another timeout, this time by Cincinnati, as they were confused about what offensive package they were in. So with seven minutes and three seconds left in the game, Cincinnati will take a timeout. Let's go back to Quincy Hips a little bit. Uh, here's a young man from Tampa who's that Hurricane C is a terrific pass rusher in the making. And uh, yesterday was feeling some discomfort. They found an irregular heartbeat and they held him out as a precautionary measure. But uh, we just don't know what the future holds for Quincy Hips. They're going to have to further check him out back home in South Florida and, and see what is really going on because that's something you don't want to mess with, obviously. And, you know, if he's out for any length of time, that's just another blow for the Miami defensive line, which already had uh, Chad Pegues dismissed from the team before the season opener. Next week, the Hurricanes will be back at it again from the Orange Bowl, only this time squaring off against Big East rival Virginia Tech. We'll have all the coverage beginning at 11.30 p.m. exclusively on Sports Channel Florida. You can uh, get tickets by calling 305-284-CANES or 1-800-GO-CANES. 
And you can actually uh, go to the game, see it, go home, and watch us. And on the check us out. That's right. It's going to be a big game, their first test in the Big East Conference. And it's a big game because after that, they face UCLA. And they really have to, uh, I think they've had a good building, a good starting block in the last two weeks. They've got to see themselves on film, got to correct some things from week one. And in week two, I, I guess they'll do the same thing and go back and try to improve offensively and defensively. Special teams really been a bright spot for this team. And I, I think that uh, this young team is building on something that's going to be a little bit better, maybe higher expectations than people may think for this team this well, year. Next week is certainly a key. Virginia Tech uh, won their opening game easily, and, and today they blew out Clemson. That's right. So uh, they have looked very impressive. Yeah, and they're, they're very, very strong on defense, but their offense probably a little better than most people expected. So we'll see what happens next week. For now, the Hurricanes lead at 38-6 with 7.03 to go in the fourth quarter, and you can see Nippert Stadium pretty much has emptied out. Pretty nice contingent of uh, Miami Hurricane fans. Made it to this ball game, filling up the uh, stands on the far side of the field. They're down around the 10 and 20 yard line. And there are some of the Hurricane fans. And of course, as always, Richard Mercier's mom and dad, Richard and Gwen, the starting left guard for Miami from Montreal, Canada. They, I don't know if they've ever missed a game. Even when Rich was so. injured You're right. and missed 10 games last year, they still went to the game. That's right. That's dedication. Second and eight for the Bearcats. Bonner in motion behind Kenner, his quarterback. Kenner will throw under some pressure and incomplete for Bonner. Now uh, that's a questionable call right there. Chris Campbell put a hand out on the receiver and the line judge from about 25 yards away with not a very good angle on it made the call. Let's take a look at Chris Campbell, his left side. Let's see if he get, it gets any jersey or tries to hold off. I don't think so. That's pretty uh, patty cake foul to me and Chris Campbell was in great position. A high throw anyway by Kenner, the quarterback, and the freshman linebacker gets called for pass interference, but hey, good play, son. Good they, job, Chris. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Well, the spot foul puts it up close to the 27-yard line. Chris Campbell, the freshman out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. I guarantee the Miami coaches will see that one on film, and they'll send that to the league office and say, if you're going to call that, what, ch what chance That's the right. defen defensive guys have? That was iffy at best, in my opinion. So a first down for the Bearcats at their 27. Cooper on the handoff and gets up close to the 30-yard line. Robert Michael Lawson, number 97, on the tackle for the Hurricane defense. Call it a gain of three. It'll be second and seven, Cincinnati. Clock continues to move. We're under seven minutes now. 6.59 to play. Another good thing about this game, Frank, I don't think Miami has any injuries uh, to report as of right now. And we've got our fingers crossed up here. You know, the, the bad news with Quincy Hips going into the game. But Miami's played a tough and aggressive game on both sides of the ball. And it looks like they're going to get out of here uh, without any nicks. I don't think the clock, the play is being stopped because I don't think the game clock moved. And there was a play inbounds. There was no reason for the clock to stop. Set the clock to 6, 47. 6 minutes, 47 seconds. So they will take 12 seconds off the game clock. I was wondering why the clock was stopped because on there was a no reason play, right. for it to be on a running play up the middle that was inbounds. So now the clock will move with 6.45 to play in the football game. Triple wide receiver, top of the screen. And Cooper, the lone running back behind Deontay Kenner. This is Cooper. Cooper finds a seam. Nick Ward brings him down at the 39-yard line, but that is enough for a Cincinnati first down as Cooper got nine. Cincinnati coming back after really getting stomped by Tulane. They played pretty well early, Frank. They just didn't capitalize. They had to settle for field goals instead of getting into the end zone early, and I think that might have changed the complexion of the game early, but it was too much Miami. They converted every turnover really with touchdowns, and they got the fake uh, field goal. They get in position. They score on the next play, so Miami doing a good job converting on turnovers today. Again, triple wide receiver out to the top of the screen. Quick three-step drop. That's complete to Bonner. And Bonner is tied up and nowhere to go as Nick Ward made an excellent play. Ward doing a nice job. They've seen that screen so many times. They, they should have it down on, on how to get it defense properly. You see Nick Ward, he's the man up in, in the front of your screen initially trying to, to block outside is Collins Baker, but really a nice job by Ward holding his ground and Bonner runs right into the tackler Ward. Nice play outside on the corner. With help from Rod Mack, number 51, the uh, outside linebacker. Trips now to the bottom of the screen. 
And again, Cooper, the only running back behind Deontay Kenner on a second and 11. Kenner going to run it up the middle, has some room. Kenner will try to slide down. Nate Brooks got a pretty good shot at him and held him a yard shy of a first down. Deontay Kenner obviously never played baseball or stealing a base. Had a tough time getting down, went to the patty cake steps and almost got his head taken off by Nate Brooks. Take a look here. They were going to pump the screen and go deep to the left side against the trips, but he's got to get down a little quicker than that. What, he's, he's just trying to find where the, where the yardage markers are for the first down, but he's got to get down because the, those guys are taking shots at quarterbacks when they get down the field. He did pick up 10, paid the price for it at the 48-yard line. It's a third and one. Cincinnati 7 of 16 on third down conversions. And that was uh, one of the left guard, I believe, jumped, like Joe Dixon. Maybe it was Vince Bird, but it was a procedure penalty against Cincinnati. Dead ball, full start on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. Left guard looked like Frank, number 68. You called it Joe Dixon, the freshman backup offensive lineman, jumping a little early for the uh, for the Bearcat offense, bringing up a third and a long six. And when he jumps, it probably registers on the Richter scale. He's 341. 341. <laughs> Let's put it this way, when he jumps, he can't hide from anybody. He's, let's put it, he's not jumping, he's rolling into the uh, procedure foul. So that'll make it a third and six from the Bearcat 43. Again, the triple wide receiver down to the bottom of the screen. Kenner with a quick drop, flag is down, that pass is caught by Chris Archie, and he is drilled immediately by Rod Mack, but let's check out the flag. They're gonna get Derek Ham for uh, getting right on the snap count. It looked like he was just a touch early, but Let's let's check it out. Well, they got enough for the first down, so they'll decline the penalty as it goes to the Miami 49. Well, Archie with his first catch today, and that'll give the Bearcats a first down at the Miami 49. Offside, defense, the penalty is declined. First down. Let's take another look at Chris Archie, the freshman from Detroit. You like to see this from a, a freshman. He goes up and takes the football away. He gets bumped from the outside, but. He knows somebody's coming in from the inside. Rod Mack delivers the blow, but Archie comes down with the catch. Nice concentration by the freshman. 4.30 left to go. Ninth Miami penalty. Kenner over the middle, complete, and Bonner takes a pop from Al Blades, but holds on and picks up a dozen and another first down. Two nice catches in a row by young receivers. Uh, actually, that was a senior receiver that time, Cornelius Bonner, over the middle. But a nice play action fake by the quarterback, Kenner, and then he sticks the ball down the middle in tight coverage. You see Popovich and Al Blades delivering the blow, but Cornelius Bonner hangs on. He had two catches last week, and Bonner comes up with another big catch over the middle. 24th first down for Cincinnati. But that does belie their offensive production in this game on the scoreboard. This is Cooper stacked up in the middle. Chris Campbell got a helmet in there, and then Derek Ham finished him off, along with Michael Lawson, pickup of about two as the clock continues to move with 3.54 left to go in this game. Here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati, Miami leads it 38 to six. Canes were up 28-6 at halftime. They came out early in the second half, had an interception and a block punt that led to 10 points. And really at that point, the Bearcats were really playing catch up and uh, they just haven't been able to accomplish anything. Again, three wide receivers in the formation on a second and eight. Cooper, the lone running back behind Kenner. Cornelius Bonner with the motion. Kenner under some pressure. Flips it out to Cooper at the 35 and pushed out of bounds by Marquise Fitzgerald at the Miami 26 yard line, but that's a pickup of nine and a first down. Marquise Fitzgerald bumping the running back, Robert Cooper out of bounds, but a nice job. Kenner looks down the field, doesn't see anything. Miami dropping off in their zones, so he just retreats a little bit, throws the ball outside to Cooper. It looks like Fitzgerald was a little nicked up, but might have uh, bruised his ankle or his leg on the plate. Got up a, a little wobbly, was limping, but stays in the ball game. And Mike Rumpf in there at cornerback for Miami. There's a look at the first downs, but again, that belies what it says on the scoreboard. Cooper, run down from the backside by Michael Burrow. With help from Javon Rhodes, number 50, a gain of about two. And with 3.07 left to go, it'll be a second and eight. Miami has scored 31 unanswered points to this point in the game. Look at Javon Rhodes, a former linebacker, switched to defensive end to give that position some depth. This year, a little bit smallish for a defensive end. Did a nice job, though, stay, uh, staying on the line of scrimmage and 
really not letting anybody get penetration down the field to tackle, won that battle at the line of scrimmage. This is an 11-play drive for the Bearcats. And timeout from Deontay Kenner. Two minutes, 38 seconds left to go. It's Miami 38, Cincinnati 6. And we're going to take a timeout as there's a break in the action on the field. We'll be back here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Canes lead at 38-6. We'll be back with the conclusion right after this on Sports Channel. Get all the information on Hurricane Athletics at the official Athletic Department website. Visit us at www.miami.edu slash athletics for the inside scoop. And don't forget to vote for your play of the week. That's www.miami slash edu slash athletics. Back to play with a second and eight for the Bearcats at the Miami 24. Deontay Kenner, three-step drop, threw it low, and it was dropped by Cornelius Bonner. Incomplete pass. It'll bring up a third and eight. Deontay Kenner today, 18 now of 34 with one interception, 223 yards. When you look at the numbers, John, Cincinnati has 156 yards rushing on 44 carries, which is a you know, pretty good average defensively for Miami, 236 yards passing but only two field goals to show for it That's so right. Far. That's the main thing. They've kept him off the scoreboard and out of the end zone. Only six points surrendered by this Hurricane defense. Third and eight for the Bearcats. Kenner. Under pressure, hit by Barreau, and that forces the incompletion. Michael Barreau gets the credit for his second quarterback hurry of the day, the second time he has forced an incompletion. That's right, Michael Barreau beating the left tackle, Brian Ewell, on the play. Take a look, he stalls him, then goes inside, a power move inside, and beelines right for the quarterback, Deontay Kenner. Just a nice job. He looked like he was going to go outside, and the last second he uses his speed to come inside. Just a big day, a great afternoon for Michael Barreau, the junior defensive lineman. So with 2.31 to play, it's fourth and eight for the Bearcats. Kenner again under pressure, running out of the pocket. Slows down, throws, passes, tipped away, incomplete. Mike Rump got a hand in there. And the Hurricanes will take over on downs. A good look at Mike Rump, the true freshman out of Delray Beach. And I'll tell you what, this guy, if you had to put together a defensive back on a computer, you would get Mike Rump's body. He's got the size, he's got the speed, and he's a, a tough player, 6'2", 195 pounds. He's only a freshman out of Delray Beach, and he's got some promise to him, Frank. We watched him work out yesterday just when they were going through light workouts, and he's got great speed and great size. He's one to watch in the future for the Hurricane defense. A couple of Hurricane fans here as Miami is 418 yards total offense, and they start first and 10 from the 25. Davenport trying to find a scene, bubbles the football, Look out, this may be a Cincinnati touchdown. It is picked up and it's gonna be a score for Cincinnati. Sean Ferguson, the cornerback, will score the touchdown for Cincinnati. And that's a shame for the Miami defense because they had held Cincinnati off the scoreboard in, as far as getting to the end zone. You're right, Sean Ferguson did a nice job recovering the football for the Bearcat defense and they run it in for the score. Just a stretch play out to the short side of the football field. You see Najee Davenport coming to the outside. Really not a whole lot there, but just a strip of the football. You see number four. 48, Hassan Champion, the linebacker, does a nice job. This Bearcat defense doesn't give up, and you see number one, Daryl Jones, trying to strip the football as a receiver at the last line of defense for the Hurricane offense, but it's a touchdown for the Bearcats. So that makes it 38 to 12 with the conversion attempt upcoming, and it appears Cincinnati will go for two. They move the ball toward the left hash mark, and indeed the Bearcats will go for the two-point conversion. Two minutes, 18 seconds left to play, and Cincinnati gets on the touchdown board, albeit a defensive touchdown. And Miami has to call timeout. They have one of the slot receivers uncovered, and they may be missing a linebacker, in fact. Well, Jeff Popovich called the timeout. Here's a look at uh, Sean Ferguson out of Quincy Shanks High School in Florida. Another Florida guy. You see him everywhere you go. And he picks up the Cincinnati touchdown. Najee Davenport guilty of his second fumble in two weeks, although he has three touchdowns. So today he, he got one and he gave one away. And yeah, there's 14 players on the Cincinnati roster that are from the state of Florida. So you see that a lot. You said, Frank, we go around, travel from team to team. There's a lot of players in the state of Florida, and there's 14 of them right here in Cincinnati. There is Sean Ferguson as he picks up the touchdown. 
had a fumble recovery last week against Tulane, and so he picks up his second fumble recovery and gets six points to boot. Two minutes, 18 seconds left to play. It's Miami 38, Cincinnati 12 with the two-point conversion upcoming. And just a shame for Najee Davenport, who's had a terrific day for Miami. Seven carries for 91 yards in that scintillating 66-yard touchdown run. But uh, he'll he'll want that one back. He he wants doesn't want to leave the ball on the ground. That's for sure. Yeah, he may want to tiptoe out of that film study room tomorrow after the t after the long touchdown because that's something you don't like to do at the end of a game. You, we want to finish on a crisp note, and you don't want to give an easy touchdown to a, a Bearcat defense that way. Triple wide receiver, top of the screen. Kenner. Throws for it, incomplete. Going for number two, Collins Baker, and Mike Rumpf had the good coverage, so the conversion is no good, and the score remains Miami 38 and Cincinnati 12 with 2.14 left to play here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. It's kind of anticipating a quarterback draw on that two-point conversion, John. You were thinking along the same lines as, as me. I kind of thought they were going to spread him out with uh, with a little bit of motion and use the athletic ability of Kenner to maybe make a play, but tried to throw on the quick slant. He's been high on that throw all, all afternoon, and again, uh, they fail on the two-point conversion. Miami will put the good hands team on for an anticipated onside kick or perhaps a pooch kick. And Cincinnati will just roll a dice. I mean, they're losing by 26 points with 2.14 left to go. And as they did last week, trying to save a little face, they scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter against Tulane and made the final score at least respectable. And then you see Butch Davis talking to Najee Davenport saying, look, son, you didn't cost us a game. You cost us a touchdown, but, you know, we're willing to take that for the potential that you have. And but hold on to the rock. Give us, but <laughs> do us a favor and put a handle on that That's thing. That's right. Take it with you and eat up about two minutes and 14 seconds so we can get in, get a shower, and get back undefeated 2-0. Jason Mamarelli will line up for the onside kick. And as I indicated, the Hurricanes with the good hands team try and pick up the uh, onside. Mamarelli will kick it. And that's never gonna reach 10 yards. And uh, the Hurricanes smartly did not go after that football because it was obvious it wasn't going to go 10 yards. So the Hurricanes will take over first and 10 at the 41-yard line. I'll tell you what, nobody does that onside kick better than Olindo Mari of the Dolphins. Right. And he does it from a, a regular approach, which is the thing that really throws people off. They must have used that about four or five times in the preseason, the Dolphins did, and they did a great job with it. So the Hurricanes take over first and 10 at the Cincinnati 41-yard line. Kenny Kelly remains the quarterback. Najee Davenport the tailback. Wilbur Valdez is the fullback. Well, Najee gets right back on the horse and picks up a couple of yards to the 40-yard line. Number 96, David Vitovitz making the tackle. And we are under two minutes here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. A minute 55 and counting. And the Hurricanes will pick up victory number two and now look forward to their Big East opener next week against Virginia Tech. And John, Virginia Tech's found a way to beat Miami three years in a row. They've all been games that have gone either way or could have gone either way. And yeah, Virginia been, Tech's come out and won. All been close in the fourth quarter and, and Miami really not finding a way to win. And that's the biggest thing I think Butch Davis is looking for as Kenny Kelly lets the uh, play clock run down to about under five seconds before he snaps the football. They have to find a way to win those games, especially at home in the fourth quarter. It's McPartland, the fullback. He'll pick up about three or four more. Nice job by Kenny Kelly, practicing milk in the play clock. And good presence by the freshman. He certainly has a presence out there. There's no doubt about well, he that. He was highly touted coming out of Tampa. And, uh, you know, it's very deserved because you've seen him play now for two weeks in a row. And he has, he doesn't play like a freshman. He doesn't look like a freshman. Looks like he has a handle on what he's doing. And that may pay dividends uh, down the line as, as this young Hurricane team moves into the uh, next couple of seasons under his direction. Well, Kenny's going to have to hurry. They were late getting the play in from the sideline. And so Miami may even take the delay. They got the playoff. Kelly to Daryl Jones, complete at the 30. He's hit right there. Jones pulling his man forward. He pulled McKnight forward and got a first down. Yeah, that should be the last play of the game too, Frank, unless they, uh, they'll have to run one more snap. But nice effort on the outside late in this ball game by Daryl Jones.
the wide receiver. Kenny Kelly, four of five for 42 yards in his fourth quarter work here at Cincinnati. We're at 32 seconds and the clock moving once again, so we should have one more play and that'll do it. Hurricanes will walk home with the victory. Well, they won't walk home, they'll walk away with the victory. <laughs> It'd be a long walk home. Looks like Kenny's just gonna take a knee and uh, get this thing over with, get a shower, get on the plane, let's get some chow and head back to South Florida. Kelly kneels and that'll do it. The clock moving with nine seconds and the Miami Hurricanes will pick up victory number two on the season. Great effort by the Miami defense. Uh, an, a defensive touchdown by Cincinnati kind of spoiled the effort at the end. But Butch Davis will go over, shake hands with Rick Minner, say nice job and the Hurricanes walk away from this one. 38 to 12 winners here at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. I think that Miami has to be happy the way they've started the season. They've done a nice job in week one. They come back with a nice, solid performance. Special teams, again, a, a big key in the victory. I thought Scott Covington played well, threw the ball well, ran the offense, and the defense was swarming to the football. We'll be back to wrap it up from Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Again, the final score, it's Miami 38, Cincinnati 12. We'll be back to wrap it up from Nippert Stadium right after this.